Hello and welcome guys to today's live discussion about the prologue to Stormlight Archive 5. Let me know if you can see me. Um, I'm going to move my mic back a little. Um, let me know how the audio is. Haven't done this in some time, so hopefully um, it's not too bad. And hopefully, I'm looking at it, it's still in the green. So hopefully because I recently recorded a video and the audio was terrible <laughs> and there's nothing I can do about it because it was an interview which I'll which I'll have to do my best to fix in post but please say hi please let me know um, where you're from today it is Sunday morning I had to check <laughs> it's Sunday morning in Sydney nine o'clock in the morning and the thing is that um, we had a time change overnight so I didn't realize I was going to get an extra hour of sleep before this. So I, I've been ready for quite some time for this stream. Okay, it's starting to pop up now. The chats are working. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Let me see. Yeah, we can. We It's all Gucci. Hello, dude. Thanks for joining. Hello, everyone. Hey, Elizabeth. God, God is here. Oh, my goodness. Hello. What an honor. <laughs> um... For the first couple minutes, guys, I'm just going to let people roll in. Um, we'll say hello. And um, after that, um, we will start going through the chapter. And uh, when when I watched the video, I, I took furious notes. I have three full A4 pages of notes <laughs> about what happened in this chapter. So we'll just go through them and uh, we'll do a recap, talk about anything interesting, and then we'll, we can... Uh, uh, pick things apart um, after we do that. Um, okay, let me scroll up. Um, from Argentina, hey Mateo, 8 p.m. Ah, oh, good. I tried to time it as as best I could for for the majority of the world, but the uh, the thing is, it, that's really hard to do. <laughs> but cool. Hello from Sweden. Hello, um, Brisbane, fellow Aussie. Hey man, how are you going? Um, insane prologue agreed first thought no way in hell that was actually the Stormfather this seems to be the um, the main discussion discussion point about this chapter and we'll definitely debate that I'm undecided at this point hello from Chile nice um, John D hello hope your day is well going well from America hey thanks for joining John um, I'll move this down a little um, yeah, it's going well so far. It's um, just started, really. Me neither in UK. Hello, Chaos Walking. Um, yes, I found that interesting too. Hello, Canada. Hey, oh, it's so cool. Um, it's so, you don't really, like, you just assume you're talking to the void, but it's very cool hearing uh, where everyone's from. Joseph, how are you doing, man? Thanks for being here, dude. Um, oh, Argentina again. Oh, nice. Lots of uh, South American people here today. 5 p.m. in Utah. Oh, nice. Nice and close to the Sanderson man himself. Um, yuck mouth. Hey, dude, it's going well. How are you, how are you going, man? Um, 1 a.m. in Germany. Thanks for staying up. I appreciate it. Hey, Wyatt. Um... Where in Canada are you at? I don't know if you're, if this is talking to somebody uh, else, but I'm from Sydney, Australia. Um, 504 in Costa Rica, nice. Well, so, <laughs> there's way more people here than I thought there would be. Um, if you're just joining, I'm just saying hello first. In a few minutes, we'll get we'll, we'll get going on the chapter. Uh, hey, Lucy from Scotland. It's nice to see our familiar faces show up. 7 a.m. here in the Philippines. Hey, man, thank you for um, being here nice and early. Hey, Richard. Oh. Yeah, I just, I thought, I thought I might get a few people. Hey, Wayne, uh, Amy from the UK, because, um, yeah, you guys were probably the, the, the side of Europe that could join this. Everyone else is probably, uh, sleeping. Argentina, Sweden. Hey guys. Thank you, Elliot. It's, it's nice to be back. Things have been, uh, slow. I know I was like, Hey, I'm back. Secret of the Stormlight Archive. And then I haven't posted in another month and a half. Uh, things have just been very full on in my life, but slowly getting back on track and uh, working on new things. California. Um, thank you for the first time, Father, let the fight begin. Um, Shattering of Aldenasium, nice name. Oh, I thought that was my uh, my icon for a second. 
Um, did I get the books from Kickstarter? Um, because of the, the shipping added up um, so much for me living in Australia, the international shipping, I got the um, ebook and audiobook editions, um, which will be very exciting. Hey, Kevin from Washington. Nice. Thanks for being here. Um, another Aussie. Nice to see Aussies here. It's always nice. Um, Storybound. Thanks for being here, man. Um, okay. Sorry. Lots of messages. Hello. 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 I'm just going to speed through another Aussie. Hello guys, Tennessee. Oh, this is cool. It's cool seeing where everyone's from. Um, MN Ontario. Yeah. New Zealand. It was nice. Hey, and it's always good to get a time change over the weekend. So you can, uh, just let <laughs> Sunday draw out a little bit longer <laughs> before going back to work from Illinois. Excited for this discussion. Thank you, man. And Trinidad and Tobago, that's awesome, man. And Ryan just says Thydeka. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Thydeka, that was like the most hype moment. And like I had a feeling he'd show up. Um but it was nice to nice to uh do it. See him in a trench coat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the shipping was um a killer. Absolutely. Um I'm sure everyone here has has uh you know, gone into the Kickstarter for one of the packages, at least that I, it was split much more evenly than I thought it would be. Um, I, I feel like the shipping for the U S mustn't have been too bad because there was a lot of people who did like the full, the full, full package. Um, hello from Texas. <laughs> hey, happy Caledon. That's an awesome name. Okay. So I'll quickly, um, uh, put this up. I I'm doing light cosmic spoilers. So like there's no, at this point, um, there's, sorry, um, there's no way we can't refer to the Cosmere, um, but I, I know this might be a little bit of a buzzkill for some people, but I want to keep Thydekar's full identity secret if possible, because there are a lot of people who just read Stormlight and I don't want to ruin that moment for them. So we can allude to things and, uh, you know, you can talk about the Sion and you can talk about, oh, they're probably from Mistborn and stuff, but try try your best to not, um, make it too, too, um, blatant. What, what exactly what you're on about, you, you know, you'll know how to do it. Just, just think if your friend's about to read Mistborn or something and you're telling them about stuff, uh, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we'll hopefully, hopefully that's, hopefully that goes well. <laughs> well, live. Hey, Paulo from Portugal. Thanks for being here, man. Seth did nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, thank you, man. Thank you. F um, thank you for the encouragement. Um, hundred dollar, hundred twenty dollar shipping to Missouri. Is that is that everything? Uh, or uh, ten dollars per month? That's all right. See, I would have done that. That's uh, that's what I would have done that. All right, let's let's begin, people. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all 72 of you. That's an amazing turnout. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be the annoying YouTuber person and saying, could you please like the video? That'd be awesome. Um, mainly, mainly because, um, you guys are very dedicated and very nice for being here, but a lot of people who read the Cosmere don't know, don't know about my channel. So it helps, it helps, uh, people, uh, find their way to me. All right. So I'll put this up. Okay. Ooh. Hopefully this fits. Light Cosmic Spoilers currently recapping the chapter. Okay, let's do this. I hope you are all ready. Let's start the recap. Okay, so first, a couple things to clarify that um, Sanderson said um, before reading the chapter, which I should say now, which was, he said, there is a mistake um, in the Rhythm of War t like timeline or, or that he'll have to account for something from Rhythm of War not matching up with this prologue. So we can maybe try and spot what that is. And the other thing he said is like, some things are subject to change. So I don't think it'll change that much. Um, but I, I, I suppose he's just talking about that thing that didn't line up um, perfectly with Rhythm of War. And uh, we'll see if we can track that down. I've also got, if you guys, if it might be helpful for you if you go on the Stormlight Archive subreddit. Um, a user, which I'll have to check their name again, has transcribed the whole chapter. 
So if you want to kind of follow along where I'm at, that will help you. But I'm just doing my dot point notes. So I won't be doing word for word. I'll just be like um, finding the, uh, the parts that interest me. And there's lots of writing in all caps and question marks um, <laughs> and uh, clarifying things. Okay. So the chapter starts with Gavala at the moment um, excuse my pronunciation, a Haratium, where the heralds, the last desolation, where the heralds put all their blades into the earth and abandoned the oath pacts, which I think is the most glorious way this chapter could have started. Um, and immediately, like, I got way too excited and thought he was actually there that day, but then I quickly realized this is, um, a kind of vision situation similar to what Dalina had with the Stormfather, um, whether this is the storm father, we, we is, remains to be seen. We, we shall see as we, as we discuss. Um, and, uh, the, the first interesting thing that the storm father alludes to, or pretty much actually says to Gavilar is that he's actually looking to replace the herald or a herald, which first, first got me intrigued because I thought, wow, this means that the Stormfather really has been looking at Kaladin as some sort of um, replacement to honor or a, a new generation of Herald to some degree. So that got me excited. But then that also raised red flags where I was like, hmm, d does the Stormfather really want to do that? Um, so that that's a moment where already in the first paragraph, I started to think, is this the Stormfather? Um, yeah, let's see. Yes, and God says to live. Everyone thought it was going to be to die. Um, classic. Classic Sanderson to, um, <laughs> um, to do that, to subvert expectations like that. Okay, let me scroll down a little bit, just see what people are saying. Um, okay, was that a vision Dalinar can access? It doesn't seem that Dalinar can go to this vision, which also suggests to me that this might not be the Stormfather, because this is like a, an extremely important moment in Roshar's history. It's a little strange that Talonar never had access to this vision. Um, but I, I suppose as we talk about it, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe see why. Yeah, same, Bolo. I thought it wasn't a vision. I'm like, he was there 4,000 years ago? No way. <laughs> okay. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, people are doubting it's the Stormfather. All right, let's keep going. So I wrote down that Gavala takes Yezrin's blade and swings it around like an idiot and kind of throws it. Like, no respect. No respect um, for the King of the Heralds. And the Stormfather's kind of grumbling at this. He's not pleased with that. Um, classic Gavala, not surprised there. Um, and he's trying to figure out the words, like the, the words a man can say. He, he wants to speed run the words, and he's trying any combo. Stormfather's not having it. And uh, it, it, we, we have confirmed that Gavala can read, and he has read all the women's script throughout the Way of Kings. So he, he knows all the cheeky secrets hidden in that book, and he still can't get the words in. Um, okay, let me have a look. I was there, Gandalf, yes. Yes, God says, very strange the vision is not during a high storm. Another good point. Because um, uh, Dalinar does get to the point where he can kind of pick and choose. Um, kind of like going through like old uh, family videos with the Stormfather. So maybe uh, Gavala had, had a uh, certain... certain certain relationship where he could just kind of visit things. Elliot says, to live backs up my theory that Gavilar's cognitive shadow will come back as Odin's champion. Yeah, that's a, that's a theory I'm, I, I have thought about. And uh, I don't know, I kind of just want him to be dead. I just kind of want him to be dead. Um, maybe it's a void spread of some kind, another good, um, yeah, another good theory. Pardon me, but F. Jezreel, I don't trust him at all. Well, he's a drunkard now. He's not hurting anyone, as far as I can say. Uh, as far as I can see, anyway. Um, all right. 
Yeah, okay. Well, as for like confirming who who or who isn't the Stormfather, we'll do that towards the end. I just want to go through things though. Loving the discussion though. Okay. Alison asks, are the, word, are the words Gavilar wanted the Radiant Oaths, or is there a different oath to become a herald? Um, it's not confirmed. I feel like he just knows um, you need to say words to unlock something, um, whether it's being a Radiant or a herald. And even the Stormfather later says it's not about the exact word you say. You, you can't just, like, say the words. Um, so, yeah. Dalana has access to the same vision. He visits the honor blades when the Stormfather explains the oath pack for the first time. Now, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I'm fairly sure um, Gavilar, I mean, Dalinar sees the, the day where the Radiants betrayed their oaths and they put all of their blades in the ground and walked away. I don't believe he was actually at Aharatium, the last desolation, that key moment from the prelude. I don't think so. But Back, um, refer me to a page or something or a chapter and I'll check that out because it's very likely that I've missed that. Anyway, um, let's keep going. So, um, he takes Chanaracha's blade, um, who's mentioned that she's a soldier. Um, it's got a missing section in the, he, he, he spent a lot of time describing this blade, how it's got a mi miss, missing section in the middle, it's red, um, and it seems impossible um, I and there was a lot of description on this and my reasoning for that or what what's telling me is that it's going to be important for a certain revelation of a certain big theory everyone's talking about <laughs> um, Gavala gets super cocky and he's like I'm probably gonna replace uh, Talonel he's 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 not cut out for it and you just laugh at that um, it cuts out to saying the vision is taking place in the palace and immediately Gavala thinks of everyone else as the little people. And <laughs> he says, these little people have no bloody clue what I'm up to. He just thinks the world of himself. Um, so, yeah. He was, he took Navani and Yasna there. Did I miss this massive scene? Have I just forgotten this? Um, Gavala out here trying to say every word of the way of kicks. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. Stormfather definitely sus, for sure. Um, maybe Stormfather wants to save Tarn, as he has proven to be the only one worthy after a thousand years. Rest can rot in down damnation. I, I don't think so. I, I don't think, um, he would be gunning for one of them like that. Um, but that's just my opinion. Okay, let me have a look. He was taken. He he was taken. Navani Gorks and Yasna to find the abandoned honor blades. And the, really, man. See, sometimes you just got to recheck things. All right. Gavilar is lit. I love characters like this. Yeah, he he he's annoying, but he's amazing. Um, okay, so he wants to find Urethiru. He's researching the radiance. He wants eternal life. I'm just going through my notes here. Um, what I found very interesting here, and another clue about the Stormfather, like whether it's the Stormfather or not, Gavala thinks all of this to himself, that he wants to find eternal life, and he wants to find Erethiru, and then the Stormfather replies directly to what he's thinking, and, uh, Gavala's like, I don't think, uh, he can read my mind. Um, but it seems like he totally can. <laughs> so that was another moment. Gavala, like, he picks up on things, but he's so arrogant. He's like, no, nah, that couldn't be the case. No way. Um, they're pretending to be heralds. So this was another moment that stood out to me. Did you guys notice that too? Did you find that a little sus? That the Stormfather immediately was replying to everything Gavala was thinking? Yeah, I thought Dallin and I saw the recreant so yeah, all right, see him. Yeah, I, I, that's what I thought. Okay, uh, chaos walking. Fairly sure. Fairly, fairly sure. Okay, but then other people are saying they did go. I've got to check this, man. I've got to check this. Um, sorry, I, 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 like this must be something that I've just like gotten out of my memory because I just thought like seeing Gavla at this moment in time, I didn't r remember anyone else being there. Um, okay. 
And uh, the Stormfather's like, are you ready for eternal life? Don't you understand what's going to happen to you? Don't you understand all the heralds are kind of crazy now? And Gabalar's like, nah, bro, don't worry about it. I got plenty of, like, like, how long does it take? Like a thousand years? I'll, I'll figure it out in a thousand years. I won't be crazy. So very cocky. Um, he wants divinity. He looks down on Dalina a lot. And that was, that was, the, I didn't like that. Like, it, it, it's somewhat expected, but it, it hurts, it hurts me for Dalinar because he, he admired Gavilar so much. It sucks to see Gavilar, just see him as one of the little people to some degree. Um, oh my god, everyone's referring me to the chapters. Thank you. Oathbringer chapter, th- you guys are legends, by the way. Thank you. Um, um, Oathbringer chapter 38, I will check that. I got all my copies behind me. Thank you so much for, for finding that for me. Um, 2 a.m. in Bulgaria. Thank you for this content. Thank you, Boris. Thanks for being here, man. Um, and thank you for everyone. For, like, I, I wanted to, like, the thing is, I want to discuss this with fellow Stormlight fans. And, dude, I'm not, I'm not the, I don't know everything for sure. And I don't remember everything. So thank you for clarifying. Okay. Yeah, Gavala is just the worst. Really interesting chapter, though. Small thing, but I love the continuity to kill from the Way of Kings. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Okay, um, Dalinar doesn't want to hurt the past Shindy. Gavala knows about the rift, and <laughs> yeah, Gavala knows about the rift, um, and, and he uses it to manipulate Dalinar, which was just brutal. Um, but also, so it's so like in line with Gavala as a as a terrible, well, as an egotistical, manipulative person. So he used that to kind of poke at Dalinar and get him out of the way for a bit, um, get him drinking again, which is really crappy of him. And then he thinks to himself, oh, I've got to meet Rostaris and uh, Thydekar tonight, and I'm sure we all just he just went, yes, yes, we're finally getting it, we're finally getting this moment. Um, the release of this chapter definitely makes the wait harder for me. Yeah, agreed, agreed. This made me like Gavala more, even more I like how arrogant he was. Yeah, it makes him interesting. Uh, the Doctor, have I dropped One Piece? Do you plan to read more soon? I've been in a huge reading slump, but I am reading again. I have not dropped One Piece, as you can see. Whoops. I have Luffy with me here. So, no, I haven't dropped it. Still still very much into One Piece. <laughs> um, but getting back into the swing of things now. Um... Oh, somebody says, I can only hear audio, can't see him, is it just me? Oh my god, is that is that what's happening here? Is there no, is there no video right now? If there's no video, oh my god. I'm going to die, because I thought everything was working. Please let me know. <laughs> um, okay. So after this, he tells Dalinar to follow the codes, encourages him to drink. His guard, Petanor, um, another member of the Sons of Honor, didn't know about that, could have had that in my Kalec video. Um... Gavala says he's just going to outgrow the Sons of Honor. He's just using them for his own benefits. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I, I got that one right, at least, in the video. I can see. Okay, thank goodness. Um, don't die. I'll try my best. <laughs> um, okay, cool. I was worried. I was worried. Thank you, guys. Um, all right, let's keep going. So, yeah, he's going to meet with the Sons of Honor. Stormfather notes Dalinar's potential. Maybe I uh, wrote maybe already seen visions for Dalinar, for Dalinar's quote. See, sometimes you write notes and you don't know what you mean. Um, but the Stormfather really takes the time to say, "I no 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 don't don't take a dump on Dalinar. This guy has potential more than you know." So I don't know if th- this was a moment where I thought, "Okay, this is the Stormfather because we know that he builds a relationship with Dalinar and they become what they do become." So that was a moment for me where I'm like, okay, this is definitely the Stormfather. Um, a lot of people just joined. 104 to 18 people. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. If you just joined, we're just recapping the chapter through my notes and discussing things that pop up as we go. Um, and then we'll just go crazy with the theories by the end. Um, okay. Our boy Thydekar is going to pop up um, in a minute. So, is there any... What are we thinking so far? So, uh, as far as I can tell, 
we've had the moment he's in the vision he's at the he's at the honor blades in the ground at Aratium, the last desolation he's like i'm gonna replace a herald stormfather apparently wants to replace one not sure about that and uh he basically thinks everyone else sucks dalinar's drunk i'm gonna use his um <laughs> ex-wife to get at him and hey i'm about to meet my boy thydekar that's where we're at any th- i don't think there's much else to say with that so it's kind of setting setting the scene hello captain cal thank you for being here i'm here for the theories yeah let's do it i think it is the assault father but he's hiding a lot from dalinar hmm um okay interesting 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 Cultivation also saw potential in Dalinar. Yeah, yeah, that is a good point. Oh, I'm so glad you guys brought up chapter 38. Um, chapter 38 in Oathbring, I'll have to check that out. The Lord of Scars. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so Thydek- enter Thydekar, um, which looks to be <laughs> like basically a floating hoodie <laughs> at this point or a floating gown of some kind um which is great looks like he's using a c on a, of some description yeah so it's not he's not actually there he's it's like an avatar wearing a hoodie <laughs> so Thynikar shows up and this is where i lost my mind and i was just like notes write all the notes um we notice that um, Thardikar wants someone, it's later confirmed it's Rastaris or Kalak. Interesting that he's specifically honing in on Kalak. We don't, we still don't know exactly why Rastaris has been like this guy. Maybe because Kalak's the one who's been like most driven of all the heralds, it seems, to get off of Roshar, which is basically what um, Thardikar is trying to do from his own planet. Um, we see he's got a hemorrhagic spike through his head, which is just, yep, everyone, if you've read Mistborn, you know what that means, and that's amazing, and also a very cool visual. Um, Gavala, when he sees Thardikar as the floating hoodie, <laughs> he thinks he, he's reminded of the Lightweaver Radiance, and he starts, he, he starts to wonder, um, if... Thardikar has radiant powers or is, is sim- has something similar to light weaving. And I wrote Stormfather knows that he's a cognitive shadow. So the Stormfather's in the know about what, what the deal with Thardikar is. Um, and it seems uh, like he, he did, I think he did clarify to that to Gavala. He's like, no, 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 this, is, this ain't a radiant dude. Um, uh Thoughts on why Thardikar was blue, something to do with Spike. Just imagine it, imagine it like like a hologram. Um, it's like he's not actually there. He's just kind of uh, buzzing in, so to speak. Um, I mean, it depends on how long the Stormfather was talking to Gavala. It's been, if it's been years, then yeah, the relationship would totally be different than the Stormfather's relationship with Dalinar would be. Yeah, it does depend. Um, through through what um, we Tara Vengeance speaks about it, I believe in... Oathbringer, um, that he spoke to G- Gavala, which we kind of do see that now. Um, we see that conversation now, but he did say that, excuse me, that they had been talking, he had been getting visions for a while. Sorry, burping a lot. Um, I imagine it as this hologram from Star Wars. Lot. Yeah, that's pretty much what I had. Three scions stacked in a trench coat, basically. Yeah, if you guys have seen um, <laughs> Bojack Horseman, I thought of uh, Vincent Adultman. <laughs> which if if you've if you haven't seen that that reference means nothing but there's a character that's clearly three um children in a trench coat trying to be an adult um yeah do we know what initially pitted Thardica and Rosaris against each other I mean other than they have diverging agendas yeah yeah um I I suppose that they just they both want the same things and want to do d- different things with them kind of uh, but we don't know the full history. Um, Kalak knows where Bardemish room is, that's why. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that is, yes, that is the big crux of it. But but how did, how did Thydekar figure that out? Um, that's the question. If Thydekar of all people is telling you to be careful, my God, listen to him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Alrighty. All right. Let's keep going. 
let's keep going. Um, okay. Uh, where am I at? Okay, Thardico has rocked up. Definitely a Sion. Okay, he wonders if he could bring in Navani. Um, and, he, and he notes that he can't trust Eli or <laughs> or, uh, or Sadius. Yes. So he actually has this moment where he thinks Navani's actually pretty brilliant. Maybe I could bring her into this, which I found that the whole Navani dynamic was very, very interesting. Um, and an interesting um, way to subvert expectations because I didn't see that coming, that he actually was still quite fond of Navani and saw how brilliant she is, but he was a bit apprehensive about bringing her in um but I, I love how he's like nah dude can't trust the saddiest couple there's no way <laughs> he's way too ambitious which gave me a laugh um i wrote in capitals only one new herald so it looks like yeah it, it seemed to be stressed that they only wanted to replace one of the heralds why that was we'll maybe figure out as we discuss he regretted the coldness of their relationship um his relationship with navani and, uh, and he thinks it's better just to make a clean cut um, because he's going to live forever because all these people are going to die. So may as well um, cut ties with Navani. Um, so that's how it is. Um, okay, let me have a look. Let me have a look-see. Um, this is interesting. Let me see this Mark says. I think the version of the Stormfather that Gavilar is interact interacting with has a piece of Tanavas cognitive shadow attached to it, and that's why it's that's why it manifests and speaks so differently. Perhaps because well, the thing is, like the Stormfather, as far as I can, uh, as far as I know, is t um, the cognitive shadow of Honor of Tanavas. So yeah, maybe because it's a little earlier, there's a slight difference in how he's appearing, but we'll get more into that a bit later. Um, sup, I just walked in. Hey, Alien B, we're just recapping the chapter so far, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about things as we go and then get into big theories by the end. Um, yep, I mean, if you're going to be immortal, you got to avoid the pain of loss, I suppose. Yeah, he's kind of pulling off the band aid uh, early. Alrighty, let's keep going. Um, yep, regret the coldness of their relationship. And Rosaris and Nail enter. Our boys, the, the classic Herald duo, have walked into the room. Um, <laughs> and he's he doesn't know it's Nail, but he's like, this guy's impressive. Which is basically what we all thought when Nail first showed up, whenever he did in the books. I was like, I don't know who you are, Mr. Crescent Moon on your face, but you are very cool and scary. And Gavala thought the same. Um, he thinks to himself he doesn't know why Thyrica wants Rastaris. And it is confirmed, this is a little detail that may, might not be that interesting to most of you, but it's confirmed that Rastaris did found the Sons of Honor. If you watch my Sons of Honor Kalak video, we, I wasn't sure if he was actually the guy who started the whole thing. Um, but here it's confirmed. So Kalak did start the Sons of Honor. This is confirmed. Um, and I wrote in caps, doesn't know their heralds. And I did a square around heralds. Like, my goodness. What a, like, what a bloody arrogant guy Gavala is. He's like, nah. But to be fair, from what we've seen of Kalak, herald isn't exactly the first impression you get. To be fair. Um, but surely Gavala must have, like, you know, must have occurred to him. Okay. Mm, okay, this is interesting. That thing that Stormfather said about being one of the Ten Fools makes me think it was a Herald on, undercover. Did did the Stormfather mention the Ten Fool things? Or I think it was Gavala saying that. Oh, I, I'm not sure. If you could find me the line of that, I'd love, I'd love to look into that. Carl says, I, hey, Carl, I love words of Christian. They should be canon, yeah. <laughs> nah, dude. It, uh, it should be it should be words of Brandon. I don't know. I don't know these things. Yeah, I love that too, Joshua. He's like, dude, I'm not going through the torture on Braze. I'll just give up, dude. What's the point? And when he said it like that, I was like, yeah. But then, yeah, the desolations. But he doesn't care. Loves a bit of war. Alrighty. 
So he doesn't know they're heralds. Kalak wanted um, the honor of men back to return before he made them go wrong. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Kalak says he, well, Gavala thinks, or Kavala says, uh, Kavala, Kalak says that he wanted, it, it was more about the honor of men returning. And I found it interesting that it was referred to before he messed it up or before he, before he made them go wrong. Um, I believe this is referring to the trapping of Bada Mishram. And uh, I think Kalak really messed things up on Roshar. Like, as I was suggesting in my video, I think he has a lot of guilt he's living with um, for what he's done. But it's still not really clear exactly what he's done. Um, but he he's I, he's kind of on a quest of redemption whilst also being terrified and wanting to just leave. That's that's the vibe I'm getting. Let me see. There was this was confirmation that Rostaris doesn't even put up a persona to appear more significant before his underling allies. Yeah, he's still the same guy we saw at Lasting Integrity. Hundred percent. He's a bumbling little dude. Yeah, for, for sure. True. Kalak is a bumbling idiot. Hard to believe he directed Amram to steal Helleran's shards. Yeah, after Kalan's badassery way back when. Yeah, maybe he just heard, like, we need shards. And then, like, you know, Amram talking to his underlings was like, Rustaris has requested this. You know, so maybe it wasn't necessarily that, uh, <laughs> that of a hard order. Um... Gavala is so far in over his head. Even Thardic of all people took pity of him. He's just an idiot. <laughs> all right, let's continue. Um, yeah, he said that Kalak doesn't necessarily want to return the Knight's Radiant. All right, next page of notes. Next page. Okay. Um, Rostaris knows Thardica and is scared. Kalak knows where Bar Ado Mishram is. Okay, yes. So this plays into everything I was talking about in my Kalak video. Um, confirmed. And like, Bar Ado Mishram is going to be um, so important in this next book. Like, he set it up very clearly, especially at the end of Rhythm of War. It seems like they're, they're, it's like basically a mission to find her. I believe it's a her. Um, and here Kalak says he knows where where Bada Mishram is. So as people were saying before, that's why Thardika is interested. Um, and long long in the short of it, basically uh, Bada Mishram granted, uh, like basically took over Odum's place for a little while and granted uh, the Pashendi, the listeners, the singers, whatever, I can't get it straight sometimes, um, their forms. And when... It, uh, Bardo Mishram was trapped, so they became the Parshman. So basically, there's a lot of potential um, with that sort of power. And uh, Thardikar seems interested in that. And um, Kalak seems regretful of what's happened there. Kalak, like all the Heralds, is insane though, says Jason. They've been alive for thousands of years. It's like... You guys purposely forget that. Yeah, yeah. They're like they're they're all loose cannons. They're all like, you know what, Kalak's doing alright compared to some of them. <laughs> he's like he's getting on with some things, you know? Um Swampfish says Gavilar's ending was so tragic, the man basically gave up on um everything for his one goal for this one goal, thinking he was playing everyone, when at the end he was the one playing in a game he couldn't begin to understand. Yeah, he was on the cusp of it, I'd say. Um Funny, t um, Paolo says, funny to see how happy Gavala was to have the support of Amram Sadius and Eli. What could go wrong? Yeah, I know, right? Such, such a, uh, such a lovely group of people. And Uvo's odds says, yeah, forms of power. That's, that's a better way. That's the correct term. Thank you. Um, mm, and then I wrote, Kalak says he has done it again. And he feels so much worse. I'm going to quickly go to the transcript because I feel like that was... Um, that was very important. Let me have a look. Okay, here we go. Rostari says, You, Gavala, you're ruining it all. Worse. I've done it again. I've, I'm feeling so much worse. Okay, and this is where Nail puts a hand on, uh, on Gavala's shoulder. 
Okay, so yeah, sorry, I'll go back a little bit. Mishram the unmade, Gavilar frowned, trying to connect that to what he knew. Why would Thydekar care about an unmade? It didn't seem to fit. A piece of the puzzle so oddly shaped he wasn't even sure how to use it. I've ruined it all, Rastari says. You, Gavilar, you're ruining it, you're ruining it all. Worse, I've done it again. I'm feeling so much worse. Okay, so as I spoke about a little bit, um, as I spoke about a smidge, um, in my Kalik video that the it seems like there's a magical element to their madness and when Kalik started to say he's done it again this made my ears perk up um maybe the entrapment of Bar Ado Mishram had to do with the Herald's mental state to some degree um what happened to the One Piece reviews um I'll, I'll quickly address this sorry for the Stormlight people, I had a massive reading burnout, I was taking so many notes while reading that it was hard to enjoy the story, took a massive break, but now I'm reading it again, really enjoying it, and, uh, you know, if I, if I get the, um, you know, once I complete more of the arcs, if I get the, the itch to create videos, I absolutely will, I absolutely will do that again, and I showed another One Piece person, like, I've got Luffy right here, so, it's a, it, 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 there's a chance it will continue, you know, we'll see, we shall see. All right, let me go. Um, okay. Bard and Mishram tried to replace the shard and failed. Does this foreshadow to the Stormfather failing to replace? Oh, no, that's an interesting connection you've made there. Um, perhaps. Uh, Firas, five, uh, $5. Thank you so much for the good content. Enjoy uh, maybe half a coffee on me. Oh, I appreciate that, mate. That was, uh, that, no, that'll, that'll get me a coffee. <laughs> I uh, appreciate that, man. That's um, very, very kind of you. Thank you so much. Rip Starbucks prices. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Let's continue. Slight tension there. Sorry, guys. Okay. So now puts his hand on Gavilar's shoulder. What have you done? <laughs> um, Gavilar takes out spheres and Nail loses his mind and being like, what have you done? You are a fool. He's found void light. So I think Nail quickly got, got uh, a grasp on just how, how far our boy Gav was into things. I don't think he realized um, how deep he was into what was happening. So Nail is absolutely uh, not, not into this. I'll have to, I will have to um, go back to my notes on all the prologues, um, but I believe, um, I'm trying to think, you guys can help me. Um, I'm just trying to remember, did, did, um, sorry, I'm stuttering like crazy. Um, did Nail talk to Venli prior to meeting Gavala that night? I'll have to tie that up because that, that will be telling as to see how Nail's reacting in this scene. Um, uh, Mark, great question. What do you think that will ha happen when they free Bardo Mishram? I have no bloody clue. We'll, we'll, we can talk about possibilities a bit later. Oh, Caleb, thanks, mate. Enjoy the other half of the coffee on me. Great content. I appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much. That's so generous. Okay. Um, yes, a good point, which we'll talk about soon. Um, uh, anti void light. Yeah, anti void light and anti void light spheres. Yes, from Braze. Okay, sorry, continuing. Um. Ch -ch -ch. Yep, Gavilar thinks Kalak is pretending, as well as Nail, and I wrote lol, because it's made me laugh. <laughs> um, Kalak sees a way out, connects connects to Navani listening in. Okay, yeah, so this is the part where we get the exact dialogue from um, the Rhythm of War prologue, where Navani's listening at the door, Kalak sees a way out, and our girl, Navani the Queen, walks in. Um, and then... Uh, it, we, we already know this, but we still get Gavala confirming he moved the light between Braze and um, Rosha through Shadesma. Uh, enter Navani. Gavala notices how beautiful she was. Um, cho cho uh, chooses to sever attachments. He's he's mean on purpose. So that it kind of recontextualizes the whole Rhythm of War prologue in this section there, which I thought was neat. And what I what I also enjoyed is how Sanderson, whenever we got to like another prologue that we'd read before, he kind of just sums it up so we can get more Gavala stuff, which which I appreciated. Uh, uh, unless you know, unless um, there's something extra. All right, thanks guys. Yeah, I believe. 
Nail, yeah, Nail stopped Venley when she was sneaking around. Yes, Nail speaks to Venley. I, I'm fairly sure he speaks beforehand. Yeah. All straight to Gavala. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's always conflicting stuff. Uh, yeah, she was with Ulim. And, like, that. that's when Nail was like, no, no, no. And he kind of proposes the whole method in, in setting Seth on Gavala. So it's actually Nail who does all that. Or who, who kind of pulls the trigger. Okay, Bard and Mishram tried to replace Odium. Created... Uh, the Parshman by accident. Yeah, that's another confirmation. We knew it, but it's just it's mentioned again. Oh yeah, and we and it, this is the first mention of the Stormfather's form as a shimmer in the air. Now I've been reading discussions. People are cross referencing how the Storm uh, Stormfather has been referred to in the other books and how he has been appearing. I haven't um, dug through all that yet um, because I do want to actually make a video about this. This is kind of this is helping me gather my thoughts for it um, so I can put it together. And I do want to get into the details of how the Stormfather has appeared throughout the other books because it it's it's purposefully like the, the he he's duping you a little like he makes you question his ident identity here on, on purpose I believe okay um, gave them the forms fell she was too small a being to basically do it which she was doing radiance chapter in a gem gemstone creating parchment okay yep yeah. and this was we we went through all this in the Kalak video um it's all there more or less in the other books if you scour through them enough um i think it's hesse hesse's mythica which is an in-world book mentions that um a group of radiance trapped her uh, trapped about a mushroom in a gemstone i believe uh Kalak was part of that too okay and that's how the parchment were formed um, let me see what you guys are saying. After Gavala met him, Nail found Venli and Ulim and arranged for Ulim to leave to listen to Seth. Oh, it's uh, okay. Yeah, we'll have to confirm whether it's after or before. Okay. Um, it is nice to see Gavala for the fifth time. Lucy, I'm so glad I caught you live, but I have to, have to sleep now. Keep it up. We'll enjoy your content so much. Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Long shot. Ah, uh, no, actually, a, sh a shimmer, much like how the Stormfather appeared, actually popped up in one of Dalinar's The Way of King visions, except that was Honor speaking to the vision recipient. Yeah, but we, d it, I'm like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly sure we figured out it was the Stormfather with the visions the whole time, because he's the co cognitive shadow of um, Tanavast slash Honor. Alrighty. Um, let's keep going down. Okay. Oh, yeah, and this is a cool name drop. I don't know if you guys picked this one up. Um, Axendweth. We get the name drop of Axendweth, um, who is working for Gavala. Um, and as Gavala thinks this about Axendweth, the Stormfather grumbles, um, more like kind of vibrates, however he expresses himself. Um, so another clue that the Stormfather, this, whoever the Stormfather is, can read Gavala's mind to some degree. Um, and if you don't remember Axendweth, um, Axendweth was mentioned in the Rhythm of War flashbacks for Eshenai and Venli, and it's pretty clear she is from Skadril, the Mistborn world, due to, like, a lot of metal on her person, um, and rings and stuff. And, um, I get, getting the details of this right, I want to get this right. She gives, like, she gives a Void Light Sphere to, I believe, Venli. Um, I may have to quickly check this. I'm going to quick, I'm going to quickly do a quick, uh, <laughs> copper mind search here. Um, but it, it's, it's another confirmation that she was working with Gav uh, Gavala. Axendweth is a member of Gavala's retinue involved in his dealings with the forces of Odium. Yeah, she meets with Venli and gives her a gemstone that contains Ulim. Okay, right. So she's the one who hooked her up with Ulim. That was back in one of the flashbacks. I think it was shortly after the humans first uh, met the, the listeners. Okay, I mean, we know the Stormfather was using, using Gavala lying openly to him. It makes sense that he would seem hypocritical yeah um you're right because uh like we we get confirmation he was lying about some things captain cow super chat oh man thank you so much 
Um, grateful for the quality. Stop my contact. Random question. If Lopin and Patton met alone, how quickly do you think they would become best friends? <laughs> you know what? Like, that would be an interesting combination. Because, like, Lopin's got such great banter with people and he throws people off. Patton throws people off, but not not necessarily because of the good banter, just because he's so out there. I would I would love to see that moment. I don't know if they'd become best friends, but I would love to see that combo. That's a great one, man. And thank you again. That's very uh that's uh really generous. Thank you so much. Um The Stormfather in this prologue praises the Radiance. In books one and two, the Stormfather was ve vehemently opposed to the Radiance. It can't be the same Stormfather. Hmm. That is a very, very good point that I will have to look into more. All right. Yeah, but, and someone's saying he can lie as well. But it's good to note what he could be lying about. Axelmeth definitely is the one who helped Void Light get in the cognitive realm. Yep. Yes, it's a very terrorist sounding name. Agreed with you. Keep in mind, the longer you have a bond, the more the spren get a personality. Yes, good point. So it might have been a long harp on type deal for the Stormfather. Hmm. Hmm. All hell the copper mind. Yes, without the copper mind, I would be nothing. <laughs> yeah, thank God for the copper mind. It's bloody amazing. Um, so you put up your Kalag video a little while back. Can you talk about the implications from this chapter? Namely how Rastaris was sniffing the wine but never drinking it. Yeah, yeah, um, Adam. Um, I, from what I gathered from that one, it's just because he's paranoid about Thydekar coming to get him, put him to sleep through some wine. He's just, he's just really sus. He knows people are after him. Um, we just get further confirmation that he is extremely involved with Bardemishram, knows where she is. Um, it looks like he's going to go and um, get that gemstone in the next book. So it's more just confirming what we, are, what we were guessing at in that video. Uh, more or less. You're welcome. Thank you, Captain Kel. Thank you so much. All right, let's, um, yeah, he's shown, uh, the Stormfather is ever evolving and growing. Yeah, the Stormfather discussion is going to be interesting when we get to that, guys. Um, and thank you all for still being here. 129 people. That's crazy. Thank you so much. All right, let's keep going. Um, where are we at? Axendworth. Okay, so we, we, he thinks of Axendworth. Um, he thinks of trapping, <laughs> okay, he thinks of trapping the Stormfather in a gem. Like, this guy is unhinged, mate. He's an absolute loose unit. Um, Gavilar is just like, he, he's, bloody hell, yeah. Um, he's not bonded, and the Stormfather says that Gavilar is his tool. That's an interesting point. Okay, enter Amaran with the Sons of Honor members. And old man with robes. And I wrote Taravangian question mark. And then it is confirmed it's Taravangian. Um, Gavilar wonders if Amram will stick with him or Rastaris. Interesting. Because um, as we saw, like Amram's pretty damn committed to the Sons of Honor. So he, he does wonder if he'll just jump straight to that ship. Amram wants to, uh, Amram wants the throne, thinks. And... And Gavilar thinks Elokar is awful at ruling. So we're not alone with that thought. <laughs> Although Elokar has his good moments. Uh, but yeah, Gavilar knows. Gavilar knows uh, what's up there. Okay, so it's just more like internal dialogue. He's he's sussing people out. He's, he's, he's got a million plots at one time. And everyone who enters the room, he's extremely... He's kind of reading them. Okay, Tarabangian starts looking at the map... Uh, he worries about, he asks if you worry about the lives of the people beneath us, okay? Again, Taravangian with the God Complex, and uh, him and Gavala have a lovely, lovely connection over just thinking they're top lads. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Um, and we get a Death Rattle quote here, which <laughs> got me extremely excited. Um, we'll talk about that now, I'll just, I'll just read a couple of uh, your comments Um, Captain Carl, I heard about the theory that the Stormfather is an imposter in Phantology podcast video the other day. I think that it was suggesting that it might be Bardo Mishram. 
ah, it could be an imposter, but the thought of it being Bard and Mishram, I don't necessarily, that one doesn't necessarily hit for me immediately, but I wouldn't rule it out. You can never rule everything out. If you trap the storm, father, do you stop the high storms? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a great question. Maybe. Um, just realize that from now on, the Cosme will be written by B-Money. And, and I'm so scared of what that's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was great on that stream. That was funny. Gavala is the example a dictionary would use for the word ambitious. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Let's look at these death rattles. So Gavala quotes, a dangerous coming to this land, to this world, an ancient danger. The desolation is near, the ever storm, the night of sorrows. Man, every time I hear the night of sorrows, I lose my mind because I just, I just want it. That's the one I want to get. If I can get one thing before the book comes out, I want to nail the night of sorrows. <laughs> this is, this is my hill I'm going to die on. Um, Taravangian gets pale. He freaks out. Um, he goes, where did you hear those words? He heard the words of his mum, which were, I stand before him above the world itself. And he speaks the truth. The desolation is near the ever storm, the night of sorrows. Oh my God. I'm getting chills already. All right. Let me quickly, um, go to my death rattle notes because the one that Taravangian quotes from his mother I feel like that one we've heard before. I feel, I feel at least the last three sentences we have definitely heard before. The desolation is near the episode the night of sorrows. We've heard that. Um, but the stand before him thing uh, seems very familiar. Let me have a quick um, look here for a minute. Okay, no. Let me just look up... Okay, no, we had we had another one which was similar. I have seen the end and I've heard it named. The Night of Sorrows, the True Desolation, the Everstorm. Collected on Nana says, 1172, 15 seconds pre-death by the Silent Gatherers. Subject was Dark-Eyed Youth of Unknown Origin. Okay, so that one's like, whatever. Um, but I, again, like, these are, these are consistent with the other death rattles. What's hmm, What's interesting, though, is why Gavilar is saying this quote. A danger is coming to this land, to this world, an ancient danger. The desolation is near the Everstorm, the night of sorrows. Sorry, again, I'm just going to pull up the transcript. What was... Hmm. Gavilar said, shocked at the sincerity he felt. Hmm. He, be he believed Gavala felt foolish when he tried to explain the true things the Stormfather had told him, for he knew they sounded ridiculous. Okay, so the Stormfather has told him this. <laughs> Ooh, don't you love this? Don't you love trying to piece this together? This is like, this is what it's all about. They're standing above the world, a map. Ooh, yes, I like yeah, I like that. Um, connection to the death rattle, like the imagery there. Let's see what you guys are saying about it. Um, the little one needs dinner. It's great to sit chatless with all of you. Thanks for being here, Carl. Thanks, mate. Um, night of Sorrows might be the night when the champions face each other and humanity loses to Odium. Yeah, well, my current working theory, if you if you saw my video series where we're look, trying to figure out the ending to the entire Stormlight Archive through the death rattles, um, I was, I basically came to the conclusion that at the, the end of this fifth book, we're going to lose Stormlight and thus begins the Night of Sorrows. And I know it sounds out there now, but if you like watch the videos, the, the, the way I reached that conclusion isn't so far fetched. I'd like to think. Um, some people are mentioning a bit of the plot points from the Kickstarter books. I'm just going to avoid that because some people are really trying to avoid it all. Um, okay, this one. They come from the pit, two dead men, a heart in their hands, and I know that I've seen true glory. I know that the cop mine lists this as Shalant Kaladin, but I think it's Kaladin Thardkar. Interesting. The reason it's listed as um, Kaladin in Shalant is because 
the chapter when that happens is literally called True Glory, and they come from the pit, and they're supposedly dead with the gem heart in their hands, like it seems extremely on the nose. Let me know why you think that, though. Um, I'm always happy to have my mind changed. Oh, you have said it. Kaladin from the Honor Chasm, Thynika from the Pits of Hassan sound like a better match for Charlotte and Sapphire. Okay, you, you knew that, sorry. I was just explaining to everyone else. Hmm. I think it I think it was one of those... You could be right. I think it was one of those death rattles just to l allow us to confirm a death rattle. Do you know what I mean? Like, to get us on the hunt. Because the chapter's called True Glory. I just feel like that. that's, that's what it does. That's Like, that confirms it to me. But, hey... We've been proven wrong in the past. I don't know why I'm burping so much. Okay. Um, let me see what I'm up to. Okay. Yeah, so Gavala quotes... Mm. Oh. Oh my god. Just made a connection. So. Oh, guys. Guys, this could be good. This this could be really good. This could be really good, actually. So, Gavala quotes... A dangerous coming to this land, to this world, an ancient danger... The desolation is near the Eversom, the Night of Sorrows. And he says that the Stormfather has been telling him these things. But who was the unmade creating the Death Rattles? Um, Molash. So I think Molash just became a massive candidate to be like who's being undercover as the Stormfather here. Because if he creates the... De he, he's the one who caused the Death Rattles. Bloody hell. I like I, I, I like this theory that I've just uh, done. <laughs> Let me know if I'm. Do you think I'm jumping to something there? But he he created. He's the reason the death rattles happen, and I don't. There's no other recollection that I have of the Stormfather telling Dal and I anything that was a death rattle. Oh, uh, I don't know, man. I'm pretty excited with that one. Shattering of Adonalsium. Whoa, dude. So, thank you so much. $20. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate that, dude. Very much appreciate it. I love your name as well. Thank you so much, mate. Um, there are they equally... I feel like I dropped in on a conversation that's happening. Uh, about investiture. Let me see. All right. What do you think of Adeline as an extension of the baby champion theory? Adeline is born under the son of the nine. So could Adeline sacrifice himself to save? Perhaps, perhaps. I like, I like that, what you've said there, but I, I really need to look into that before I, um, yeah, to know. Hey Cam, how you doing man? Just popping in to say hey, can't uh, stay before, because well, it's good to see you dude, been missing the uploads, appreciate it man, and uh, lo loving, to, loving to see your channel get a bit more attention lately. Congrats dude, and thanks, thanks for saying hey man. Alright, so perhaps we found a connection there with Molach, and um, Molach and the death rattles there. Okay, so Tower Avenger makes a connection to what his mum says. Gavinar knows about the death rattles. He says, like, it's common. Um, and then he starts to... Th then Dalinar starts to think that he should get Dalinar on track. And then that scene ends and we enter on Esh and I. Melech is about as mindless as a Nargle. Yeah, that's the that's the one thing that's putting a kink in that little connection I've made, that he's he doesn't seem super um, aware of what he's doing, as far as we know. Okay. Enter Esh and I, and <laughs> he says he 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 thinks the conversation has gone well, and that he set her in motion to manipulate her people. And as we know, through the Oathbringer, um, Oathbringer prologue, that's not the case. Again, another example of Gavala being extremely cocky. Um, Stormfather turns. I regret the way I have treated you. And he's been lazy. Okay, so Stormfather's getting a bit done with Gavala. Um, and Stormfather says he's picked the wrong po person. And that Honor has told him to do this. Interesting, though, because... Like, again, I keep saying this. I, I will have to confirm it, but I'm, I'm almost pretty 
um, damn sure that he's like the Stormfather is a cognitive shadow of Tanavast of Honor. So him separating the personalities like Honor has asked me to do this is interesting. Interesting, interesting. Late to the chat, what is your personal opinion of what's going on with the sus father? <laughs> um, yeah, we're kind of like, I'm recapping the chapter at the moment and we're kind of sussing him out. Like, we, we, we're just taking notes of, like, when he's acting up. Um, and maybe by the end we'll get a better sense of who he is. Um, all right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going, people. I hope you're enjoying this. Some, uh, most of you are staying, so I think that's a good sign. I'm enjoying it anyway. I could just be talking to myself right now and have a great time. Um, okay. Um, Gavilar will give in to torture and come back. Yeah, he says... <laughs> Gavilar thinks the Heralds are stupid. Yeah, so he's like, I'm just going to give up on torture. Perpetual desolations. War is fantastic. Doesn't want to stop war. Doesn't care about perpetual war. Yep. Um, I wrote Stormfather Lies of Aheretium. Let me check what I was writing about here. Let me check the transcript. <sighs> okay. The Stormfather did not respond, and again Gavilar tried to read the thing's posture. Was the Stormfather proud of him? Gavilar thought this to be an elegant solution to the problem. He was uncertain why the Heralds had never realized it. Perhaps they were all cowards. Ah, Gavilar, the Stormfather said. I see my miscalculation. Your entire religious upbringing created from the lies of a heretium, it pointed you toward this conclusion, terrible though it is. Okay, so I... Just just from what I'm gathering initially there, he's just being like, you're the, you know, their faith has misinterpreted the whole deal with the Heralds and the Radiance. Um... Whether there's more to that, my brain's hitting a bit of a wall at the moment with that one. But let me let me know though. Let me know, Carlos. I wanted to pop in, give you a like. Got a dip though. We watch after read. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it, dude. Um, the storm pilot calls himself the cognitive shadow of honor. Could that be different from the con cognitive shadow of Tanavast? That's an interesting point. It could be. It could be. That's like cosmic technicality territory there. Um. I suppose we'll find out. Kind of. The Stormfather existed before Tanavast died and it has been stated before that Honor did tell him to send the visions. Okay. Hmm. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Thadokar be like, today I'm going to teach you how to make a beautiful weird smoothie of mixed up invest invested things in order to become an illusion of a blue eyes spike man attached to a floating sphere. Yeah, more or less, yes. <laughs> more or less, yes. Okay, let me find where I'm at. Um, Stormfather goes electric. It's not about what you say. She cried out agonized. Okay, uh -huh. and this is the moment everyone's talking about where a herald dies. And we get to the theory that it's Shallan's mother. We can finally talk about it. Um, I, okay. So in, in case you've missed this theory, basically, if you um, tie up the timelines, this fits in quite well to the, t the, um, the moment Shallan kills her mother, who, matches the description of a herald. Um, <laughs> and then there's a chapter in, I think it's in Words of Radiance, uh, when the you know, Everstorm is happening, and it says the world was ending, and it was all Shallan's fault. And that is such a branded thing to do. That is such a branded thing to do, to say that. Um, with that, with this being the revelation that she killed her mum, that was a herald, and we know for a fact that Talon didn't break, so who broke? Either they kickstarted the Everstorm early, um, which we kind of have seen that, but then, or was it Shalan's mum? All right, <laughs> let's talk about that. Let's just talk about the Shalan mum thing. Let's do it, man. Adam, super chat. Oh, man, thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Yep, enjoying the stream. I love 
lot of deep dives and spend a lot of time watching and rewatching your Cosmic videos and yours are the best Cosmic deep dives I've found. I appreciate that. That means a lot, dude. Uh, I apologize I haven't been uploading as much anymore, but I'm trying uh, my best. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Shalom Theory, yay, yes. Let's. I want to hear your thoughts. Audio muted? I hope not. Check your YouTube. I think on my end it says it's okay. Um, Adam says, it's almost certainly Shalan's mother, and more importantly, it means that Talon never broke. He never gave in to the torture to let the Voidbringers loose. Yes, that has, look, that has been confirmed in the words of Brandon, like, in other words, like, he said he didn't break. I believe I mentioned that in one of my videos. Um, and uh, if you connect the timelines, like, it, yeah, it, you can kind of gather that he didn't break. Whether it's whether it's because of Shalan's potentially Shalan's mother though is another question yeah it's assumed that Shalan was saying her world was ending you yeah, not the world body. yeah yeah for, for sure but like he he would be cheeky to like drop a line like that um yeah there we go the world ended and Shalom was to blame. The first line of chapter 10 of Words of Radiance. Man, I love it. Like, I really, really, really hope um, that that's the thing. Ah, Swampfish, thank you for mentioning this because we said this at the beginning. Um, he said there's like a timeline issue. Say something about realizing there's a mistake with the timeline that he needed to fix. So I got excited there because I thought it would be about Shalom killing her mum. Um, the Herald theory, um, but um, I think he did specify that the timeline mistake pertains to Rhythm of War. Um, so we'll see. Let's read what Caleb has to say. Chanaraj presumably attacked Shalam because she was not showing signs of being a Radiant. If Chanaraj's death started the desolation, does this mean that the Radiants were coming back without a desolation starting? Yeah, these are the questions that will take me time but that I'll have to I'll have to reread all the scenes with Shalan's mom with this context applied to it and just dig and dig because yeah these are the questions we have to ask to figure it out sadly there's no quick answers can a shard bait kill her wouldn't she just beam over to Braze yeah the idea is that she would have beamed over to Braze and um she broke from the torture, hence starting the des desolations. Um, as for the technicalities of, like, can a shard blade kill a herald? I'll have to, like, check all these. Sometimes you forget the nuances of, like, the rules. Um, because everyone's so overpowered now, it's, like, hard to remember how people can actually die in this series. <laughs> Shalan's shard blade was hidden in a box, Pandora's box, yeah. So cognitive shadows can have offspring... I think he has mentioned that heralds can have children, but there's like, it's not in the way we think. I think I remember researching this one point and I think he does, uh, he being Sanderson addresses this question and says it's possible, but not in the way you think, which then makes Shalan a very, like, even more interesting and then makes her split personality thing even more interesting because you know, I don't know, because I, I wonder if... Because then you get into the territory of, is her split personality thing a magical thing, or is it a complete mental thing? Um, I'm sure Brandon... Ah, oh, yeah, because that's, that's an interesting thing you brought up there. Because then you see Shalana in a whole new light. If her mother's a herald, and there's a magical aspect to their mental illnesses, and them going crazy... Um, what does this mean about Shalan's character? Hmm. But then you get into that territory of like he's he he does mental illness like quite tastefully. It w it would be a bit weird, so, like if he was just like, oh no, it was just a magic thing. Kaladin's depression was a magic spell. <laughs> like that would I don't think that would, be, you know, you it's hard to it would be hard to pull off. Eldica. It makes sense, because revealing the big Shalan secret in Rhythm of War was quite underwhelming, but it becomes overwhelming with this current Shalan mom theory. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the timelines add up. 
Yes. I thought the entire purpose of the Everstorm was to get around the need to the Herald to break. That's why they needed the Everstorm. I don't think any of the Heralds broke. Yeah, Elliot, that's pretty much the conclusion I had come to before we started to get onto this theory, because yeah, they pretty much kick-started the Everstorm. Because our boy Talon was just chilling. <laughs> um I thought the timeline mistake was about Venli and Nell. I assume that's what it's gonna be. Because, you know, I was like, when did they talk? Did they talk before or after? And maybe that's why I got confused. Um, yeah. It could be about that, whether Nail has spoken to Venli prior to talking to Gavala or vice versa. Radiance may have come back because of the Everstorm brewing in Shades, Mom. Hmm. Maybe. Um... Sorry, you guys are saying a lot of great things. I'm just I'm just reading your thoughts for a little bit before we... There's still... I got a few more lines about the chapter. Seemed like a lot of things were building up all at once for this tessellation, but China breaking could have been the thing that kicked things off. Yeah, there's a lot of... Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of things that could be potential for, for the reason, uh, the desolations and the radiance and all that has happened again, which leads to great discussions as to what was it exactly that did it. And everyone's Shalan, it's just... It would be. It makes the world feel a little bit smaller, but at the same time, it's kind of brilliant. Given that they gave Moash the fancy dagger to kill Harold, I assume the sharp blade definitely isn't enough. Well, the thing about um, that blade, Adam, is that that blade, it's like, it uses like kind of the, the same tech, if you want to call it that, as like trapping a spren in a gemstone. Um, but the heralds can't be sustained in there, and they die forever in that case. Like, they don't go to Braze or Damnation. Like, they are gone for good. So I think maybe a Shardblade could send them to, like, th the whole loop they've got going. Um, but that special fancy dagger, the Racium dagger, kills them forever. Forever. A herald could die from a regular knife blade and send back to Braze. Yeah, yeah, Racium. It's only Racium. Okay. Okay, how does Shalan's Herald Mum dying start a desolation? I thought another desolation started once because uh, once Herald's returned to, to Raisha from Braze. Yeah, basically, like, they get tortured in Braze, and if one of them breaks, um, then it happens. Okay. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Um, because I always just want to keep, uh, I want to finish up us talking about the chapter, and then we can just go crazy with the theories. Um, I've learned so much more about the series thanks to this video. Love it. Oh, I'm glad, dude. That's that's what I that's what it's all about. And I learned, dude. I learned so much too from you guys. My God, it's great. I love I love being able to to discuss it. Um, Shalan's mum being a herald will explain why the cryptics keep throwing themselves at her despite already killing one. Huh, yeah. I love all this. It's like more ammunition for the video, right? Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for Shalan ones right now just because we're, we're in a bit of a groove. Um... I think that the Everstorm is actually a substitute for Bard and Mishram. I suspect that in the past she granted them forms and in the process seeded the fused. I, I have to check back on that, but I believe there were wars that were caused by that that weren't tied to a desolation. Okay, good. This is a good confirmation. Brandon said it's not magic, magical, that he doesn't want the treatment to be magical either. Uh, but then someone says, no, he didn't. So I don't know. We have to check. <laughs> um... I think the, uh, Brendo your friendo, I think the Everstorm being planned before Ch was being planned before Chana died, but they kept rolling with the plan as a backup in case Chana wouldn't break. Yeah. Super Chat M Bell, thank you so much. That's, that's, that's really nice of you. Thank you. Um, On second thought, the heralds are always described consistently in terms of their appearance. Doesn't it make sense that they were returned by stealing a human body. Yeah, this has been a big discussion point about like how the heralds return. I was going into all of this with my Calic video, and, and Brandon's like, yeah, like they're kind of going to get a new body, but like they're kind of a cognitive shadow. Like he basically says like Raffo to some degree. So I think we'll get the exact mechanics, maybe this book.
Okay, sorry if I missed your um, questions. I'm just gonna continue. We'll finish summing up the chapter and then we'll just chat. Okay. Um, he mentions like seeing the, okay. So basically we're continuing off from when a herald has died. We see Stormfather feel physical pain, much like how all the other heralds felt physical pain when Yezrian died. They all felt it. Um, he sees the two giant eyes as the Stormfather, uh, much like how Kaladin has seen him in the past. Um, and then the Stormfather confirms that Rastaris is Kalak. And <laughs> the Stormfather ducks out. Uh, and I loved this line. Let me get the exact line, because the Stormfather knows that Gavilar is about to die. And he's, and he's such a boss when he says it. Okay, I'll read it out. So it says, Rastaris, Gavilar whispered, is he? Yes, he's a herald. Gavilar felt cold, as if he were standing in the high storm, ice seeping through his skin, seeking his heart. Those eyes. What are, Gavilar whispered, horse. The biggest fool of them all, the Stormfather said, and the thing and the thing that has miscalculated. Goodbye, Gavilar, I have seen a glimpse of what is coming, and I will not prevent it. What, Gavilar demanded, stepping forward, what is coming? Your legacy. Oh my god, that's a, I love that. I love that. Stormfather, Stormfather, mic drop. Stormfather, I right, time to head out. Sussfather. I love Sussfather. Whoever said that, you're a you're a legend. <laughs> Sussfather. <laughs> Which Herald died, we don't have confirmation, but we believe it was Chanarach being Shalan's mother. That's the working theory currently, because the timelines match up. Um Yeah, so Stormfather's like, dude, Seth's coming, I'm out. I'm 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 ducking out of here. Okay. Sadius was a legit friend, I wrote, so he did want to protect Avila. Um, okay, now this is where it gets really interesting, and you see that um, Gavilar wasn't talking to Seth in his last words, which was a very, like, very clever little twist there. I enjoyed that, that he was actually talking to the Stormfather, the Sussfather. <laughs> So I'm reading my notes. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Or it dies. Thydekar sent in his mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What does that mean, Christian? What the heck does that mean? Let me try and understand what I'm talking about here. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying about that. I expected you to come, Gavilar. For oh wait, here we go. Here we go. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Gavala hit the ground, surrounded by the wreckage of his balcony, and he saw white in a flash, but his body didn't hurt. That was an extremely bad sign. Thydekar, he thought, as a figure rose before him, shattered in the night air. Only Thydekar could... Okay, right, right, right. Okay, that's all it meant. Nothing important, of course. Um, <laughs> okay, so he's too late. Uh, he says, Thydekar, tell Thydekar he's too late. Stormfather says he doesn't do it. Gavilar talks to the Stormfather. Stormfather says that this was a failure and he'll never work with the Colons again. And if I am correct with my notes, um, Dallin, I was actually giving the sphere to the Stormfather who says no. I will quickly check that. <laughs> um, hmm. Apologies, I'm just reading a little bit. Okay, here we go. Yep, you must take this, Gavilar whispered to the Stormfather. They must not get it. He felt dazed. Tell my brother he must find the most important words a man can say. No, the Stormfather said, though a hand took the sphere. Not him, I'm sorry, Gavilar. I will never trust your family again. I made that mistake once. I will not do so a second time. Another moment for sus, sus father that we have to check out. Gavilar... Exhaled, wine of pain, not from his body, body, but from his soul. Wonder if that's a literal thing um, or a poetic thing. So he wanted to give the sphere to the Stormfather or the Sussfather, um, but it went to Seth. Okay, we have summed up the chapter. Time to discuss. Time to discuss all the things. 
time to do all the theory talk. Let me see what you guys have been saying. Storm Vega. <laughs> Seeing the future is void bringer stuff. Hmm. I'm confused. Are we saying uh, Chanarach is. Sh um, not Shalash, Ch Chanarach um, is Shalan's mum, or a guess? It's a guess. It's a guess because um, she's described as having like red hair, so we connect that to Shalan. Um, Shalan killed her mother at the same timeline that would match the timeline of this night. Um, and there's a line that's saying the world was ending and it was Shalan's doing, or, or like I'm paraphrasing. Um, yeah. So this is why people are theorizing that. So does the Stormfather have some high level of future sight or did he just see South approaching? That is the question. That is the question that we have to consider. Plus, Gabriela talked about a lot about Chanarach for some reason. Yeah, I said, yeah, like Joshua, you're right, because she, she, I mean, in earlier in the chapter, he they spent a long time describing her honor blade. And I think that means we're going to see it again. To fully connect this theory. Yeah, it's not confirmed. We're just, we're just having a guess. Wasn't there a word of Brandon somewhere talking about all 10 heralds being in the palace during the prologue, or am I misremembering that? Man, Keith, if you can get that for me, that would be great information to clarify. We've spotted about five or six of them, I think, so far. Um, isn't saying he won't ever work with one of the Collins kind of an oath? Sus father Tin hat. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Like, he's lied before. Another detail that might point towards Chanarach being Shalan Mama, <laughs> Odium influenced Shalan Papa, <laughs> might have gone so, might have done so to get close to a herald. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, oh my god, like, the, the whole, sh the whole sh Devar family dynamics, I will have to relook at. Because when you said Odium influenced her dad, I'm not getting an immediate memory of what exactly you're referring to. Um, but that's a that's an interesting point. Uh, Gavilar exerted a wine of pain, not from his body, but from his soul. Yes, interesting. Um, hey, bro, I'm praying. I'm planning to read some of that archive. Anything you wish to tell me, dude? I'm jealous. Reading it for the first time is amazing. Enjoy it, my friend. We still don't know how Gavilar got the anti-void light. He knew it was a weapon to use against void bringers, but what else did he know? Hmm. Well, he he says that he transported the light from Shadesmar. That's all we know. When he did that, how he did that, we don't know. How did he get into the cognitive realm? How did he get into Shadesmar? Yeah, how did he get into Shadesmar? Who was with him? Was it this sus father? Did they just walk it together? <laughs> hey, just got here. Has anyone mentioned how the storm father says he glimpsed what is to come, aka seeing the future, aka Odium's thing? Yes. We don't know if he's just seen Seth or seen the future. Yeah, now that we're talking about it more, sus father. Sus father. Sorry, I'll take this down. We're not recapping the chapter. Let's make a new one. Um, I'll say currently theorizing and uh, in Australia we use S instead of Z for things so that's why it might look a bit weird um, for my US friends um, let me see all right something that seemed valuable to the Shalan combo speaking of the other prologues I have a loony theory that the assassin Liss was actually the Herald Chana in disguise. Oh my God, I'm getting excited already. Chanaraj has definitely been on screen by, seen on screen by at least one character at least one time in the first two books. Oh my God. Okay. Oh dude, All right, I'm writing this down. This, uh, this is great. Cause we can hunt her down for the video. <laughs> we can do our best. I mean, I made about like 
five 20 minute videos just because he said that the ending is somewhere in those books so I can do it again <laughs> um, first two books okay I like this like let's get to the bottom of this theory man let's figure it out um, I like yeah Liz was one of those like characters when Yasna had um, hired hired an assassin it's like in hindsight you're like did that need that much attention? Um, hmm. Here come the paragraphs. Yes. I think this is all setting up to the Earth Pack being remade in book five. Yeah, I think we're going to get some like Herald, uh, like Earth Pact's re, like next generation, Kaladin being the Stormfather, like this kind of stuff. Liz is Shalash. Is she? Like, I know Shalash is there that night because Kalak says, I've seen her handiwork. She's been destroying depictions of herself. Um, whether or not that's Liss. Adam, it's 1.30am here. I'm going to bed. Enjoy your theorizing, guys. Thanks for being here, Adam. Thanks for your great comments, too. You've been an awesome contributor. Thank you. Um, how many heralds do you think we'll end up seeing in the prologues? Up to book 10, of course. I believe that this is the last Gavala Feast prologue. Um, not to say that it means we won't see the Heralds in other prologues, but I wonder if th through books uh, 6 to 10, whether he'll do another night that we see um, in different perspectives. Um, we'll see. I can only remember four. So the Heralds we have definitely seen this night we know that um we saw calic and nail we've seen jezrian was there he was a drunk um and we're told wait sorry what sorry i said calic nail jezrian and we're told shalash is there okay yeah four sorry i got a bit excited um yeah and then this list character, I'm getting a bit sus about her. Okay. Mark says, I thought the honor blade having a split blade nicely foreshadowed Shalon's dual blade situation. Oh, that's a nice, that's a neat point. I like that. Um, uh, Michael, overall, it was a good prologue. Where do you rank it? amongst the others sorry if you've already answered this no i haven't great question um if people care about what i uh what i rank them i struggle with rankings i look i i i don't hmm, it's hard because the first prologue just sets the stage it's hard to like compare it against the others because once you have the seth prologue as a base it makes all of the other ones so much more interesting and the more of the prologues you've read um the more interesting they all become so just off the top of my head hmm because i when she, when she, when i read the yasna one in words of radiance and she popped into shade smile i was extremely excited by that because you've been dying to know what yasna's all about all throughout um way of kings i, don't, I think the navani one was interesting but definitely not my favorite prologue hmm and same with the eshon i one like it was really good but not my it might be the Yasna one, weirdly enough. Or like, but this, there's something so grand about this one. And then I could even say it could be the first one because I love hearing Seth's pers perspective and the first introduction of... Uh, um, I think, look, let's just say they all have their strengths. They all have their strengths for different reasons. So the first one's like a really cool introduction to the magic system through lashing and just the descriptions of the hallways going dark with the assassin in white um, using Stormlight. The second one's so cool, just seeing a new perspective because you didn't even know that was going to be a thing at that point. Um, Yasna going into Shades Mile is incredibly exciting with the ink spray and you're just like, what is going on? This night is nuts. Then you get the Parshendi perspective, which is extremely cool. You didn't expect Ashenai. Navani, you get more of the personal stuff and this one just blows everything out of the water. Unless I'm missing... Um, other aspects of the other prologues like i've talked about them so much it's like they're all just a big blur in my head now it's one big chapter um 
Also, Shalan's vibrantly red hair is similar to the description of Shalash's hair. Don't... Are you, do you mean Chanaraj? Because I'm pretty sure Shalash is described as dark-haired. Because she she is... Like, she shows up in the interludes. I assume Axenweth got him the void light. Ah, oh, that's a good point. Maybe Axenweth did do it. Um... I'd say Odium influences a guess from how Odium caused the rage in Dalinar. Well, that was like the thrill. That was from an unmade. Oh, or, or unless, yeah, when you're talking about Odium actually speaking with Dalinar and stuff. Yeah, okay. Yep, Yezri and Shalash know Kalak were there for sure. Okay, here, yeah, let's read this one. Wouldn't the fact that this Stormfather felt the death of a herald lend credence to the idea that this was the real one and Dalinar's is a fake? That worries me. I think we've had way too much to do with the Dalinar Stormfather, if you want to call him that, to, to think he's not the real Stormfather. Like, he's just done so much. Like, he's literally flying Dalinar through the storms <laughs> at this point. So I think it's safe to say Dalinar's with the real deal. But whether Gavilar's with the Stormfather or the Susfather, we shall see. Um, but him feeling the death of a herald is interesting. I don't know... We might need to go back to when, uh, I'll write this down, when Jezrian died, um, if the Stormfather felt that, because if we, if we can see if the Stormfather felt the death of Jezrian, then we can confirm that he does get like a little notification when they die. <laughs> um... um Okay, here we go. Matthew. Can someone explain to me why the Stormfather is the Susfather? Is he up to something? Um, basically, Matthew, we're trying trying to determine whether the Stormfather is the Stormfather that works with Dalinar, like the legit one, or it's someone else posing as the Stormfather. Um, because there's been a few moments where it doesn't add up exactly. Um, there's hints that he can see the future. There's um, hints that uh, like he, he's lying he's messing with Gavilar a lot the appearance how he shows up is quite different um at moments so like there, there's just enough to create a bit of doubt that's that's what that's about Jezreel was drinking with Dalinar that night correct um whether it, I think it was that night I think because I know we get a chapter where Dalinar is going to drink and he talks to Jezreel whether it's right after he's left the room from Gavala, I'll have to check. I'll have to check the timeline on that one. By the way, guys, I'm having a great time. Like, thank you so much. This is awesome. Like, this is awesome to talk to you and to theorize, even though I'm just, like, talking to myself. I'm loving it. If Chana died and went to Braze, then s some years later, the desolation starts because Talon breaks. Does that mean Chana also broke before Talon and came back to Roshar? Yeah, that's, like... That's a theory. Like, that's that's a question to ask. Sorry, that, I'm basically saying nothing. Um, maybe is basically the answer. What if she's the right character? Um, all right, let me see. Um, oh my god! Guess what? My um, my software still shows dislikes. Take that, YouTube. Just got my first dislike. Beautiful. It's weird seeing that again. Okay. On today's episode, we all break my lost in discovery's mind. Yes. <laughs> Are we theorizing a sus father? Is an actual a, a this is the kind of name, by the way. I we gotta go back and see who called him that, because he's the guy who or she's the girl who um did it. Um sus father. It's actually an agent of Odium pretending to be the Stormfather, or just saying the Stormfather does a lot of sus things to Dalinar. Okay, so, <laughs> I like in my mind, I'm referring to it as like the sus father is like a fake Stormfather, um, and the Stormfather's legit. <laughs> On screen could mean in Shalan's flashback. Yes, yes. I don't know if he mentioned at least one time or only one time. Chanaraj has been um, seen. Next time we reread Stormlight, it's going to be like one word per day. No secrets shall hide from us. No. Why the Stormfather decided to trust Dalinar? What changed? Well, the only thing 
we know is that the Stormfather mentions a couple of times that Dalina has more potential and Gavala needs to like chill out um, because of that. So, um, hmm. He did see potential in Dalina, how he changed his. Like, we, we know he was extremely like apprehensive um, with Dalina at the beginning. Whether or not that's because he has had bad experiences with Gavala or it's a whole different person, the Spren. Or whatever. Captain Cal, copy paste from the copper mine about Shalan's father. Lin was affected by odium in some way, possibly through an unmade. Sounds like he increased his manless and violent tendencies. Okay, I'll have to. Because the good thing about the copper mind is, next to pretty much every sentence they have, they have a little reference, and it'll tell you what chapter or like or what like what part of the books gave them that idea. And it's usually good to go and check your hard copy to get a bit more context. Okay, would Shalan be able to kill a herald though? I thought the only method to kill a herald was with one of those special knives that Moash used, not, not just a sharp blade. Well, to kill a herald permanently, you need that, uh, the one, the Ratium dagger that Moash used. Um, but just to send them to Braze, I think a shard blade will do it. That'll do it. Oathpack being reformed would require a lot of new players to take the place of the old heralds. I don't think there's enough new. Yeah. Yeah, I do have this vibe though that Kal Kaladin's gonna go like god status. It just kind of feels like that. That's just a gut feeling though. Um, I don't think Liz could be Shalash since Yasna has seen them both and doesn't think they're the same person. Yeah, true. That's a great point. Can't be Shalash then because Yasna would definitely know. So it could be Chanarach. Hmm, we've got to reread the list part. We've got to reread the list part. <laughs> I mean, I got the books behind me. I don't know how deep we're going. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm way behind with the comments, aren't, aren't I? Um, oh, he said he'll do a different. Oh, he, it will be a new night and new perspectives. I love that for the back for the next five prologues. Um. Wow, I'm so behind with the comments. Sorry. I saw a comment that said, Seth, son, son, Volano, truthless of Shinova, were white on the day he did everyone a storming favor. Yeah. Brandon mentioned that there was a mistake of sort in the prologue. I didn't catch it. Something about the timeline, maybe. Do you know what he was referring to? He, he talked about it didn't match with something about the timeline in Rhythm of War. I think it's about when... Um, Nails spoke to Venli whether that happened before or after this scene. That's the only thing on my mind at the moment. That's the only thing I can kind of pick. Um, I can't lie, I'm a sucker for any, for absolutely any and all Eshenai screen time. Agreed. Eshenai is amazing. The prologues are so exciting now. In my read through, um, this which is crazy. Sorry, I can't read because in my first read, I remember finding them so boring. Yeah, because in your first read, you're like, "What the heck's going on?" And now you're like, "I see it all." You like that? I I feel like rereading Stormlight is like having the diagram <laughs> as Taravangian, and you're just like, "I see it all. It's all in the walls. I know." Hmm. Yeah, here we go. Chanarach, he said, was a soldier, I believe it. This is a soldier's blade. I should have liked to have seen her in battle. Law often claims she had flaming red hair. Is that true? Yeah, so it's, yeah. I'm pretty sure they say he does. she does have red hair. See, she's mentioned so much. Come on. It's gotta be. Axindweth equals Axe the Collector, could you imagine? Yeah, that would be a, that would be a twist. Um, let me see. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Axie's the collector, yeah. Um, I think the mistake was that Gavala was wearing blue shard plate in the prologue, it's Sadius's plate, which is red. Right. Okay. I remember reading that part. I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're swapping armors. Maybe, yeah, that could be a... But he did specifically say it's, a, it's an issue with Rhythm of Wars prologue, or Rhythm of Wars scene. 
Tanya, hello, nice to see you. Uh, avoid Spren. I, I remember last time I messed up my time zones for my live stream and you made a comment that saved me. So it's nice to see you. Avoid Spren would like to, would, Avoid Spren would know if a Herald was returned to Braze. Hmm. That's a good point. Would they? But would they get pinged like that? How the Stormfather did? When exactly did Ishar get his blade back? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he he does have his blade in Rhythm of War, doesn't he? Yeah, because he, he has that little standoff with Zeth. Especially interesting as Shalan thinks her red hair is horny in origin, but it doesn't display any but doesn't display any other horny to traits. Love that. Writing that down. You guys are totally going to see, like, what, if I get, a, like, if I put a, get together a video for this, you'll totally see, like, oh, that was my point. He totally took that. So, yeah, thank you. It's a collaborative effort. <laughs> um, horny to blood, Shalan, question mark. Hopefully I remember what I meant by that. Um, I tried looking it up to see if the Stormfather had a reaction to Jezdine, but I couldn't confirm it. Oh, thank you for doing that. Yeah. Hmm, we'll have to try and find us. Stormfather is now at find it. Stormfather is now among us as final boss. <laughs> oh, I see a tinfoil hat theory. Let's read it. I have a big tinfoil hat theory that involves Dawn Shards and the and other planets that I got because of Axie's super interesting character. Oh, tell me more. Axie's is the collector. I immediately loved that character, but he hasn't really had much else to do besides his couple of appearances so far. My favorite prologue, uh, says Amir, um, is Esha and I because I love the non-human creatures awed by human nature trope. It's one of the reasons I love Terry Pratchett's death, the character, not even. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's like, uh, that's, yeah, I loved getting the Pal Shendi perspective because of that. It's, it's, it's like interesting to see a new perspective. Alrighty, thanks for all the comments, guys. You guys are keeping this going. Isha would likely know when a herald dies, so it's another point of favor of him being the sus father. Yes, yeah, it could be any herald with that logic. Um, but yeah, Isha's a bit, he, he's one of the more villainous type ones. Okay, thanks for clarifying for that. What about Sil, though? Doesn't she confirm he's the Stormfather? It's been a while since I read it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure we know, like, that the, the Stormfather is legit, as we know him prior to this chapter. Like, the one that Dalinar has. Yes, Talon didn't break. He did not break. Yeah, other heralds feel it. Yeah, okay. The human form description of the Stormfather in Rhythm of War is very different. Here, here is more like a shade. Yeah, okay. But that makes me think of how, you know, Syl, like, as she got more of a connection with um, Kaladin, she kind of showed up more human-like and she could become full-size. Maybe that's what's happening as well with um, the Stormfather, because he, like, bonds with Dalinar. So, it makes sense to me that he would become more formed. If that makes sense. Um, okay. I'm sorry I'm so behind, but I'm, I just, like, I want to get through it all. <laughs> um, sorry, just, just trying to get some good ones. And if I, if I skip yours and, um, just say it again, just say it again. Rhythm of War Epigraph 79, Jezreen is gone, despite being all the way out here in Lothian Integrity, yeah, I felt him being ripped away. Okay, the Oath Pact, you, yeah, so this is from Kallax Journal. Each of us can sense the others to an extent, and with future investigation I know the truth of what happened to him. It felt like death at first, but that's not what it, but I think that, sorry, it felt like death at first, and I think that's what it ultimately ultimately became. Yeah, he gets trapped in the dagger, fades away, dies, yep. So they can, they can feel it. Yeah, I want Stormfather point of view chapters too. Shalan's bio complicated family. <laughs> yeah. I think Liss is a herald, 
but she's Vettel, not Chana. Oh, okay. Vettel's divine attributes are loving and healing, which could be inverted through her herald madness, making her an assassin. Hmm. That's a cool point because um, a lot of the herald's madnesses pertain to like their, their specialty as a herald. Like how Nail's all about the law, but it gets twisted. Um, and Kallik was extremely decisive as a herald, and now he can't make a decision to save his life, besides wanting to run away. Uh, okay. Great points. Great points. Um, what if the Stormfather wants to escape Rosha and he was behind it all, manipulating people heading inside? I think that would be a way... Like, I don't think there's been enough hints for that to be the case. But that's, like, that would be mad, wouldn't it? Um, Liss is the assassin that Yasna is hiring to keep an eye on Elokar's wife. Forgot her name. Um, you hear it in the words of Radiant Prologue. Do we think the Stormfather adheres to a strict protocol of ideals and rules as a splinter of honor, or can he act more as a free agent? That's a fantastic question. We've got to really, like, scour through all the scenes of the Stormfather and see what he's been like. Super chat from Captain Cal. Thank you so much, mate. I'm having a great time to check the reference on... Check the reference on the copper mine. Looks like a question Brandon answered in a QA, and a right? Thanks for the point on the references. No worries. Those references uh, saved my life. They give me so much info. Thank you for the donation, mate. Appreciate it. Um, Storms, I want to do a Stormlight Archive reread now, but i got to read Mistborn first. Yes, Brendo, your friendo, read Mistborn first, and Storm, your Stormlight reread will become ten times richer. I guarantee you that. I, guarantee, I, can, I can assure you that without a shadow of a doubt. The more Cosmere you read the juicier the Stormlight Archive gets. It, it becomes a whole different beast. Whole different beast. And I'm still making my way through the Cosmere too, so I gotta remind myself, because I wanna reread Stormlight all the time. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot of Cosmere. Is anyone else a little overwhelmed with how much Sanderson is releasing? Like, I love the books to death, but I'm also like, my God, this is like, I gotta catch up. Like, I feel like I'm so behind. Um, do you think that there will be any radiance left in Era 2? The death is my life, the strength becomes my weakness, the journey has ended. Yes, the death rattle makes the spren think... The death rattle makes me think spren will choose Maya's path. Ooh. Yeah, I just... I, I, I foresee an extremely tragic ending to Book 5. I really do. I, I really expect like a all hope is lost um, ending. And then we'll have to rebuild. We'd lift our pancake girl. <laughs> I don't know if there'll be any radiance left. I th I think we might get a reset to some degree, because like how overpowered is everyone at this point? It's crazy. Um, could be timing with Navani. Uh, Catherine says for the mistake. the The conversation lines up perfectly though. Um. Katie, this is so informative. Thank you. Oh, I need to, uh, I need to start my reread. I'm rusty on Stormlight Archive. Yes, go for it. Is the Stormfather ever described as a shimmer in Dalinar's point of view? That was what's yeah. The only reason, like, I feel like that's because he hasn't bonded with Gavilar, but we we can go through that. And by we, I mean me with my books over many weeks, <laughs> and you guys, of course. Um. Doesn't Gavilar mention that all ten blades are present in his vision, but that's impossible since Talon never relinquished the blade. Gavilar... Gavilar should have noticed one missing, right? Sus. Nemanja. Nemanja, that's... Okay. I don't know. Does he mention there's ten blades? I'm checking. I'm checking, because if that's true, that's extremely sus. Okay. On the verge of immortality. The air smelt. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Battle, battle, battle. Trailing, trailing around the blades, letting his finger linger on each one. When he became a herald, would th his blade become like these? Where's the number? 
Give me the number of blades. Sorry, I'm reading the transcript. Okay, I... Uh, I can't find it, and I'm, I don't want to just be sitting here reading. Let Find it for me, please, if you can. That would be fantastic. Um, well, Brandon would totally call, say Shalan has wanted a heritage just to do, distract us. Yeah, 100%. All right, I'm going down. I'm going to try and get a bit further down. Oh, wait, here we go. Gwerth has already done it. He walks in a circle around the nine honor blades. Okay, nine. All right, let me know if I was wrong. Let me know if I was wrong. Uh, insert name. Don't worry, The I'll leave it up so you can watch it all back. You can watch it all back. Can I go? Maybe the mantle of the Stormfather shifted to a different person, similar to how a shard can change between the prologue and the books. Does not make a ton of sense, though. Yeah, I don't know exactly how that would happen. Don't know if it, Yeah, he's definitely acting different. Whether it's a whole different being or not is the question. Um... Oh, crackpot theory. I'm always here for it. Um, maybe the Stormfather became more deceptive due to his growing connection with Gavilar and became more honorable against... Do, do connections with humans affect the personality of Spren? That's a good question. I don't know if it does. I'm not sure. But he's definitely... What are you guys thinking about the mind reading thing? Because as far as I remember, like, correct me if I'm wrong, Spren can't read their bonded humans' minds, right? So... What's that about? Because it's pretty clear he can. Well, it seems as though he can read Gavilar's mind. Um, okay, I'm going to scroll. Um, I just wanted to point out, Isha in his lucid moment mentioned reforming the Oath Pact, how to make him lucid, and the Jewel of Champions. I think that's related to Stormfather's plans and actions. All right, I'm just going to write Isha down. Like, Isha seems like one of the suspects to like who this Stormfather may be although I don't know how like how exactly that would work all right let's keep going um, I predict that Kaladin will leave the picture whether by dying joining the Oath Pact and living in Braves or some other way yeah I feel like Kaladin by the end of the next book is going to be something completely different as we know him my favorite death rattles it's been a while since I looked at them because I did that massive series on them oh mate I'd have to go back and check I, I love the ones that you can confirm. Like there are some hard evidence ones that are just in the book that uh, that pertain to scenes that happen. Those are really enjoyable. But the Night of Sorrows is the one that has got me the most interested. Um, yeah, Cormac, we have talked about this. Are you talking about the Shalans mum theory? I believe. Yeah, we've talked about that a lot. We're still we're we're still <laughs> sussing it out. My theory follows that there's a Dawn Shard on Skadriel. The LR... Oh, I'm trying to understand what your acronym is about. Sorry if I'm missing it. Learned about the Amians on his planet when he did the well planet site thing. Okay. I'm trying... Oh, I'm so sorry I'm not following that second half. Um, sometimes I sometimes I lose what I'm what's going on in the Cosmere. I'm also totally overwhelmed and I love it. Yeah. The situation reverse is playing out with Rothfuss and Martin. I prefer Brandon's insanity. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely like the more books, the merrier. Like it's way better than waiting for sure. And there's always time to catch up. I think I'm, I put a bit more pressure on myself because I feel like with the with the channel and stuff, I need to be on the cusp of everything. Um, the Stormfather also shows his spren form to several characters. There is always a description of infinity whenever he's present everywhere. Even during Dalinar's second wedding, except here. Yeah, like they describe it as like, he, he like, t he takes up, yeah, like an infinite sort of view. 
but there are also those spren that like they're almost like a black hole that look like infinity i can't recall what spren they are it almost looks like a galaxy in human form oh i can't or like they look like tears in reality oh what spren are those yeah we definitely need to like look up the descriptions of how spren show up in the physical realm and cross-reference that with this chapter install the oh, sorry i'm i'm, I'm trying uh, trying extra hard trying extra hard to read your whole theory install the technique to make people like axes and turn into original terrorist people into miss racist country oh that's an interesting okay i see what you're on about now sadly it's getting to misborn stuff so i'll have to uh uh <laughs> leave that i made i like made it my mission for this stream to make snarky jokes sorry guys someone needs to fill in for shalan yeah totally Spren can talk in the minds, yes, but can they read the minds? Could Susfather be Odium? That would be, I don't know, like, mm, it's, it, it, I think it's too big of a character for it to be. Didn't, excuse me, didn't Cal and Syl read each other's thoughts during Rhythm of War? I thought the more connected a spren is with their night, the more they can interrupt their thoughts. Okay, but um, even so, he wasn't uh, bonded with Gavala, which makes that curious, you know? Um, hmm. Lost in Discovery, I thought it was established in the prologue that Stormfather couldn't read Gavala's mind because otherwise Stormfather would have realised... Gavala's true intentions. Well, um, the thing was though, every time he was thinking about his true intentions, the Stormfather was like, like grumbling or directly replying to them. It's hard to say. Gavala sus about it. Um, I I'm a bit sus about it, but that's a good counterpoint for sure. But then it's like, if it was not the Stormfather, would he counteract them? Because he d he refers to Gavala. He says, "You are my tool." Like, remember your place. You're my tool. So, maybe he knows he knows he knows, if you if you get me. <laughs> In Words of Radiance, Shalam remarks how she wishes how she was brave like her mother. Oh. She, uh, yeah, the, the, if she, her mum's a herald, she represents the brave and obedient. Ooh, another, another neat little point. I like that. Um, didn't OG Odium mess with Delanai in books 1 to 3 giving him whispers that were bad decisions like trust Sadius by the end of Oathbringer I thought it was Odium oh, it's possible Odium could imitate the Stormfather alright so main contenders we've got Isha we've got Odium these are our 1 and 2 and I'm I'm still I'm going to write Molash because I liked that little death rattle connection we we came to like probably like an hour ago okay oh lord ruler thank you thank you guys yes the misborn connections um yeah no, no worries trying to try thank you for sharing your theory anyway um you know what you can do? Like once the video is up fully, you'll be able to just like d dump it in the comments properly and I can read it with more time and understand it. Just wanted to clarify, I don't think that I don't think it's Isha. I think Tanavas has long-term plans to sneak a Herald into the duel, probably so they can cheese the rules. That's interesting. Maybe he like sussed that uh, Odium would do the duel of champions long ago. Hmm. Interesting. The Skybreaker spread the high spread. Thanks, guys. Oh, you guys are legends. Yeah, the ones that look like infinity. Thanks for reminding me. Um. Thanks, guys. Sorry, it's like you you reply to me immediately, and I see it like ten minutes later. <laughs> I love 
I loved the word Sasfather, it's great. Gavala also mentions the Sasfather's eyes as those eyes, which leads me to believe that this is someone else. Eyes that seem more aligned with the fuse of the unmade, right? Yeah. The eyes The eyes were a moment, but like everyone sees eyes when they see the Stormfather, like in the sky. Hmm. Uh, something to check for. Uh, it's not confirmed that he read his mind, I just found moments that it seemed like he was. Um, okay, I just got here. What have you covered? Um, we've recapped the chapter. I went through all my notes. We recapped it. We theorized a little bit along the way. Main theories are if the Stormfather is the Stormfather and um, if Shalan's mom is Chanarach, the Herald. And by Shalan killing her, kickstarting desolations. Um, Catherine asks, so if Herald died and went back to Braze and broke, why would she Odium need the Everstorm to start the next desolation. That's a great point. And I have to check the timeline on things. Um, whether or not the Everstorm plan was already in motion, which it seemed like it was because Axendworth gave like a void spread to Venley ages ago. Um, maybe it was like the backup plan that just kept happening anyway. You know? Could the Sasfather be Bard and Mishram? That's one we've spoken about, but I don't think so, because it's clear th the plotline there is that she's trapped in a gemstone and they need to fix that. Oh, I love the death rattles coming back. You've killed me, bastards, you've killed me. While the sun is still hot, I die. I think the Night of Sorrows is either a partial or complete obstruction of the sun. Yeah. Yeah, I think I did connect that in, in my Night of Sorrows video, perhaps. All right. Okay. I thought about the sus father being Odium yesterday. I don't think it's likely because of what happened with Odium at the end of the before. Why would Brandon insert rays in the prologue? If it stands to continue, let me let me get your second part. That the sus father will be a big character in book five. True. Good point. Yeah. Now that Taravangian is Odium. Yeah, like having Odium be the sus father um, has less impact. Like Odium as in um, race. That's his, that's his, the shard holder's name, right? I believe so. Shalan's name come from Shalashes. She says it herself. Yes, true. How weird is it that Shannon would name her own daughter after another herald? Well, it could be like a familiarity thing, like I'm going to name you after my friend. Ah, huh. yeah, okay. Just keep in mind that the Stormfather could have stopped the return of the Everstorm. He appeared to Venli and asked if she, she really wanted to do it when he could have said stop. Let me reread this. That's right. That is right. I do remember that because he's like, Are "You sure you want to do this?" Okay. Right, but I, it, was it up to Venley to make the the call ultimately? Hmm. Huh. Whose hands do you think Nightblood will fall into in Stormlight Five? Nightblood seems to make <laughs> the rounds between characters. Um. Yeah, true that. Right. I think he's. I think he's gonna stick. I think him, uh, it and Zeth are a, kind of an iconic duo for the time being. I don't know if that will change. I'm super far behind in the stream, but so far you've said Stormfather saw potential in Dalinar. Only wanted Dalinar as his champion all along. That's pretty much potential. Hmm. Yeah. Oh god, I love, I love, I love every time I think I'm like leaning one way, someone pulls me another way. It's great. It's great discussion. Um... Personally, for the Night of Swords, I like your Shades Mar. Yeah, how the sun's setting. Um, slowly in Shades Mar. With the chapter icon for... Is it Yasna or Shalan? i got to remember. But yeah. That's probably one of the theories I'm most proud of. I'm not going to lie. Something's definitely up. The sun with shade in Shades Mar is not a sun. I still stand by that. Oh my god, I've caught up to the comments. Okay. If Channa mentioned, uh, if Channa names her daughter after Shalash, it would be kind of a, um, 
D move, considering Chana probably knows that Shalash hates people referencing. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, Shalash wants to be forgotten. She hates depictions of herself. That is a great point. I didn't even consider that. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Odium was not able to interact with anyone until a herald breaks. Even the unmade are limited between desolations because of that. Siana says a thing, says that is like a fog in their minds between desolations. Right. That's very important. Dark chaos. So that's another point to like not odium. Hmm. All right, let's do this. Right, I'm up to the I'm up to date with the comments. Thanks for the welcome, Ray. So, we've got. Let's write down our contenders. Okay. Contenders for sus father. All right. Contenders for sus father, and let me know if we should add more. Let's tr let's just talk. Let's just see where we go with this. Okay. So we've got Isha. We've got who else? We got we got Odium. I love the name Sus Father. I know I've mentioned it a million times, but it's just great. Um, I'm gonna put my one in just because. Why not? Merlach. Do we have any other contenders for Sus Father? As far as I can tell, these are the main things. Oh, this is getting messy. Too much text. Oh yeah, Bada Mishram. I'll add them in too. I'm just gonna write bam. All right. <laughs> this is like, this is what the stream was always gonna look like two hours into it. Like it was always gonna <laughs> end up like this. We always get to this point. Okay, so people are mentioning cultivation. I've somehow missed this. Okay, and there's what Star Gamer is saying, and there's of course the chance that it's just the Stormfather, and he's a bit different. Um, you know, culty could be the sus father. All right. Can, can we talk about cultivation? I, I, I don't know why it would be cultivation. Can someone uh, explain to me why we're saying that? Cultivation. Oh my god. This is... See, we're legends spending our weekends like this. This is what it's all about. Yeah, I do need the whole s <laughs> the wall with all the pictures. Okay. Oh, now it's getting so messy. Let me fix this. All right. I'm going to move contenders for sus father all the way up. So your comments aren't interrupted. Yep. Sorry, this is getting so messy. All right. All righty. When in the timeline did Honor die? I was trying to figure this out in my last video. There's no definitive date as far as I could tell did you um did you think there's a connection between Mishram and, and Mishim the moon I saw that on um Shardcast podcast about Bard and Mishram but I didn't necessarily like it the word the the name's very similar they could be All right. If you like, if you believe one of these people up here, um, plead your case. I'd love to hear why you think um, <laughs> this is who it is. Isha, because he felt the death of a herald, the the frost when he was disturbed, and the idea about making a new herald oath pact. Yes, that's a good point for Isha. How was Isha appearing like this though? That's my question. How could Isha appear with all the lightning and stuff? You know, that's and the future side thing. Jay says, I honestly think Susfather was just the Stormfather. 
I'm not going to lie, at the moment, I kind of think so too. Because I'm looking at these names, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And the interactions he had with Gavilar made him overhaul his entire approach when he moved over to Dalinar years later. I think that's um, what I'm leaning towards too, Jay, at the moment. But there are sus moments, for sure, at the same time. Mm. Yeah, and the Stormfather. I'll, I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be just the Stormfather. Yeah, important contender. Overthink, yeah. Yeah, there's always... Yeah, contender. It's just the Stormfather. Let's make that an option. <laughs> there's so much text on screen. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, it's just the storm father. Okay. Guys, it's clear this stick, obviously. Obviously, it's clear the stick. Um, I feel like cultivation would be more likely to have access to the same visions. Hmm. Perhaps. Yeah, because they had to get him into visions as well. That's a thing. Yeah. Okay, it felt... It fits cultivation's intent to be pulling the strings of important figures of Rosha. Okay, someone's saying it's... Okay. I think it's just the Stormfather. I feel like this is on brand. Okay. I'm leaning towards that too. We will know for sure if it's the Stormfather when the audiobook is released and Michael Cramer does the... Ah, that's a good point. That's the thing with audiobooks. It's like, how do you hide characters? But I guess, like, we've seen Spren imitate voices before too. Um, so that's a thing. I haven't kept up with theories because I am in midterm season, but to me it felt weird that the Stormfather was searching for a hair replacement since I don't think he does in previous books. Yeah, that's, as far as I can tell, that's never mentioned again, that he's looking for a Herald replacement. Um, I don't think so. Um, sorry, my phone was just going off. Um... Before the prologue dropped, I thought Gavilar knew a lot about the Cosmian Roshar. Now I don't th think so. He knew some weird things, but he was self-righteously, so it's comically wrong. In, yeah, in most places, yeah. He, like, knew a lot. He, like, sped-read the copper mind. He's like, I know everything. Uh, but he doesn't. Did the Stormfather in the prologue ever refer to himself as such? Could it just be to Gavilar's delusions? I don't think he does refer to himself as the Stormfather, no. He just says, Honor has told me to do this. Ishara is a bondsmith, right? Yes. Thanks, Amir. Thanks for all the great comments, mate. Hope to see you for the next one, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced of Odium. He's maybe my least. Ishara has a... Theoretic power of visions. He was there at the place when all the blades were. He's delusional enough to believe he could turn Gala to a herald. Does he have a power of visions? Because of the bondsmith thing? Oh, so M Molach, uh, Maria, is the unmade that um, was creating the death rattles. And the reason I thought Molach was a contender was because um, Gavala quotes something um, almost word for word from Death Rattles, and he says that these are things the Stormfather has told him. So that's the, that's how I made that connection. There could be could be a bit tinfoily, but I, like I, for some reason I like that. Um, I just w watched it late to the party. Thanks for letting me know it's out. No worries. Hope you enjoyed it. I lost my mind with this prologue. Yeah, I think the Stormfather's strong distrust slash dislike of humanity by the time he bonds with um, Dalinar. Uh, sorry, I think the Stormfather's strong distrust dislike of humanity by the time he bonds with Dalinar may be because of his interactions with Gavilar. Hmm. Yeah, that adds up. That adds up, absolutely. I think... Sanderson's making us question it by saying, I'll never work with the Collins again. Like, he definitely wants us to to uh, theorize. Dalinar and his third earth could summon an entire vision to person miles away with no training. Okay. All right. So that adds points to Ishar for sure. 
Maybe the sus father or the friends we made along the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the stick, again. Yeah, right? We keep forgetting about the stick the whole time. He kept saying, I am a stick. Why? Why would he say that? Like, no stick needs to justify itself. Clearly the storm father. The sus father. Okay. Um, I think Ishar was just taking advantage of the storm father's relationship with Gavala. So it's both. I think I also think it's possible that this will feel more like the storm file after Brandon gives this a revision okay right yeah true we're not taking that into account this is a draft um, it may just be the first draft bugs that make this feel weird yeah that's a great that's a very reasonable point I don't believe it's the storm father because he's always been tied to the high storms yeah Jay says I, I've seen a glimpse of of what is to come could also just be flowery language yeah right so i don't know yeah i don't know if he's like literally peeking down the corridor and seth's hauling it <laughs> you know and he's like i've seen a glimpse of what's to come <laughs> or he's like i've seen a glimpse of what's to come it's like one of these things <laughs> not a real theory but it's an unlinked copper mind with visions written into it yeah right Bondsmith can do visions as well, and he has the motive of being guilty and wanting to rescue Talon, which is why he immediately did a 180 when Gavala said he wouldn't hold out on Braze. Uh. Alright. Ishar seems like the most con if you're gonna convince me on something, I feel like Ishar is the most convincing currently. In terms of cultivation, her main motivation seems to be the growth and change, regardless of good and bad. That's it's so why she's simultaneously powerful but indifferent to Gavala's susness. Now, nah, but there's grumbling and a bit of harumphing every time Gavala says something that doesn't fly too well with whoever this character is. So I don't, like, I see your points about the growth and change. I don't necessarily it fits. I saw in the comments about how sometimes the text is in all caps for the Stormfather font, and sometimes it's not. In the Stormlight 5 prologue, not sure how much care Sanderson took in formatting. Right, has he put up an official formatting? Because I'm just reading um, someone on Reddit wrote it down. Um, yeah, and I don't know if it's always been in caps in every scene. Do we know which Herald he wants to replace with Gavilar? No, I don't think that was confirmed. Here we go. I, I, th I think if it isn't the real Stormfather, Isha is the most likely option. He has all the Bondsmith powers of connection and the memories he shows Gavel of the Desolations. Right. All right, I'm taking off Bam, taking off Molash, taking off Cultivation. I'm taking it all off because I feel like we've got a sense of what we're looking for. And I'll move this over here. Uh... Ishar probably has five oath powers to summon visions overlapping the real world, so he can manipulate the connection to see the future, right? Pizza, hello. Funny thing is the two people Gavala dismiss the most, aka Esh and I now end up setting his assassination, right? I love that actually, that's a fantastic point. Um could a cognitive shadow of Tanavas be another Stormfather separate from the one Dalana knows? Yeah, we we were, we I don't know if it was also you. Um but we were talking about this, right? Whether it's, um, I don't, I think it would be one cognitive shadow, right? It's hard to know. Is it the cognitive shadow of honor or of Tanavas? How does that necessarily work? Isha as Susfala also makes sense because he's interested in finding someone to replace him in the Oath Pact. Also because of how he and Dalin are met in Rhythm of War having been disappointed with Gavilar in the past. I'll have to reread the Isha chapters for sure. I'm Isha has me the most interested, let's say. It's the most convincing one. Um Nemanja, I have a thing about the moons. Three moons for three shards. Nomon the blue is mentioned is mentioned in the Naten Natan myth and the Queen 
bearing this child. No one is on his mood. So she slept with Tanabast. Right. I'll have to come back to that one. If it is Isha, it makes sense since you can only be a bondsmith with one of one of three spren, all of which have demonstrably closer connections to Shah's than any of the other spren and could copy their powers, right? Yeah. Isha is the most convincing. Especially because of the visions. He was there that day as well. It seems to me that's the main vision Gavala is is visiting. There's I don't know if there's mentions that he's been going to other ones too. Doesn't the Stormfather also say he was only recently aware? Before recently, he wasn't quite the same. Now this could be another Stormfather lie to avoid saying anything to Dalinar about Gavilar. I don't think the Stormfather ever mentions Gavilar to Dalinar. But I know that Taravangian mentions that Gavilar had visions. He says that in Oathbringer to somebody. I forgot who. Ah. <sighs> Hmm. What's to consider? Here we go. In my opinion, Isha and Stormfather are on a mission by Tanavast. Isha fights with something like ATM Shadows, right? Yeah, I think Honor has future sight via similar methods, but only to protect but only to people connected to his powers, right? So you're saying that there would be have to be a connection with Gavala to use that future sight? Hmm. Oh man, these these my my head's starting to hurt now. I'll read. <laughs> let's read another one. My original theory with Ulan Valley voice brand. I don't know if the timeline works out, but the lying and manipulating was very reminiscent of Valley's flashback chapters, plus the physical description ma matches. Oh, so you're saying it was Ulan? Ul like you're saying Ulan was the sus father. Mm, I don't know because if Axendweth gave Ulam to um, Venli, then and Axendweth was working for Gavala, I think that one that kind of puts a chink in that theory. All right. So I'm just having a quick score to see how far behind I am. All right. Um, okay. Changing the topic a tiny bit. Yeah, because I think we're going in circles a little bit now with this sus father thing. It's something I'll have to take more time to look into. And same with you guys if uh, you're interested. Um, changing the topic a tiny bit. Can we all agree that Chandrach being Mummy Shalan seems very likely at this point? I think, I think um, outside of the sus father, this is the biggest sort of revelation and most, most convincing theory from this chapter. I think if we take anything away from this, I think this is probably true. I think this theory is probably true. And I think it makes Shalan even more interesting. Even more interesting. Oh, okay, guys. I think that... Whoop, I'll leave that one up. I think that I'm going to start wrapping it up in these next few minutes here. Um... Keen for just a general chat about Stormlight or things happening with the channel or anything you'd like. Um, but honestly, my head's starting to get overwhelmed with the theories now and I could just hear myself like drooling out these comments and being like, oh yeah, um, yeah, this planet, that planet, like I, I'm reaching that point. Two and a half hours, I think, think we should start wrapping it up. Um, but thank you guys so much for being here and thank you so much for sitting with me and uh, theorizing where I think it's amazing we got this chapter so early. I definitely did not see it coming. Um, but yeah, with all this awesome theorizing and all this info, I'll have to get cracking on my video. I think the next... So um, for those of you here, I'll, I'll let you know um, what I was working on for the next episode of Secrets of the Stormlight Archive. I was going to do it on Sleepless. The Sleepless were going to be the topic for that one. Um, but honestly... Like this, this chapter is so fresh, so interesting and changes everything. I think I'm going to change uh, episode two to um, Gavala 
and or at least about this prologue and the implication of this prologue. I think that's more immediately interesting, at least to me and to to everyone watching. Like the sleepers are always going to be there, and we can talk about that. Then, um, besides that, the next the next video you will probably see from me. Um, I don't know if you missed it on my community post, but I talked to the guys from the Black Piper, and they they made a you might know them. They made the album Caledon. They made they're professional musicians, legit Hollywood people that made a soundtrack to The Way of Kings. So I filmed an interview with them, and I'm putting together um, that video now. Um, it was like the, the, the idea for that video was it's going like the plan was for it to be 30 minutes. Um, but we talked for about three hours. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still cutting that together and still deciding how I'll do that. But I, I hope, I hope you guys will be interested in that topic too. They're, they're amazing. And they, they know these books, they know these books, uh, like properly. They are legit. They were amazing people to talk to. And I'm, like the stories they told about adapting chapters and characters into songs, I found it fascinating. Especially if you're a music lover or a musician, you will really enjoy that video. Um, let me read some of your stuff, some of your comments. I'm the sus father, apparently. <laughs> I love it. Good stream. Thanks, Cormac. Thanks for being here. Joshua asks, how's the Wheel of Time going? Oh man, I, I've stopped with the Wheel of Time. I read the first three. I just wasn't driving. Uh, with it. Um, nothing against everyone else who's enjoying it. I just, I don't know, it just didn't click for me the way um, I thought it would. But I don't think it's bad or anything. It just not, I just didn't drive with it as much as I thought I would. Uh, maybe one day. Thanks for the good time. Take it easy. Thanks, Captain Cow. Thanks for being here. Good night, Dark Chaos. Um, thanks, Sean. Appreciate you being here. Um, enjoy your dinner, Joshua. Yeah, sleepless. I'm keen to do the sleepless, but like this is still pretty damn interesting. Hey, yeah, Tanya, it would be nuts if she if Shalan runs into her mother. That would be nuts. That would be bloody crazy. Um, Black Piper is really good. I love the Seth one. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're not that keen on listening to like the album, I just say listen to the Assassin in White. Listen to that track from the Kaladin album. Man, like. You hear the drums, like they're the Parshendi drums and the song changes when Gavilar dies to this most... Uh, you know what? That's a great song to listen to now because it follows the prologue, The Assassin in White by the Black Piper. Um, and you'll hear all the stories about how the songs were made um, when, I've, when I cut together that video. Um, how long have I been live for? I've been... We've been, we've been talking for two and a half hours. <laughs> Um, pool news. What, what about the Shalan uh, Herald Mum theory? Do you like? I like that the timelines match up. I like that um, there's the line from Sanderson about the world ending and it was Shalan's fault. I just feel like that's classic Sanderson throwing in a little hint. It, uh, it just it it just there's more truths for Shalan to unlock. They mention Chandrarach and her red hair so much in this chapter. It just it just feels it feels right it feels right um adam says make sure you take time for you we can always wait longer on new vids thanks for all you do man have a great time had a great time street i appreciate that adam um and I, i've been doing that that's why there's like massive gaps uh between videos i just want to do them when i'm in the in the right space for them so i i appreciate that and thank you guys for all being patient um I, I, I do want to post much more frequently, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, ho hopefully hopefully it becomes a much more frequent schedule. But I, I don't want to make any promises because I've done that in the past and I just always, I always mess it up. So I'm just doing it at my own pace for now. Um, but anyway, thank you guys for being here. That was awesome. Love talking about it. Love discussing. Still 110 of you here. That's bloody, bloody incredible. So, and thank you all those for you who donated. Totally unnecessary, but greatly appreciated um yeah guys keep keep theorizing and uh, let me know how you go um and I'll, I'll see you in the next video first one will be the interview with the black piper next one I'll, I'll compile all this stuff into something all right guys see you later have a great day or night wherever you are